Hello, 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 everybody. What's going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, some more Lost Initiative uh, side stuff. Uh, due to the holidays, uh, a few of the people are just unavailable today. They're still with family, traveling abroad, and just kind of doing their thing. And you know, we're not going to be like, how dare you not be here? So let them have fun, enjoy their family. But uh, How dare you not be with your family? I mean, you know, or how dare you be how with your family? How dare you? That one. No, he did not, not the other way around. Um, but, uh, me and Scott want to do something tonight, as we kind of did last night, and, um, and just hang out and, uh, do some, some D&D stuff, and I think Scott and I have, uh, have settled on doing, uh, some, some world building stuff for a future campaign, or just for fun, or, or whatever it is, because we were talking a little bit about, um, just, like, future campaign settings that we'd like to play in last night, and, uh, we might as well flesh one of those worlds out, at least to some degree, and have a little bit of fun with it, uh, along the way. Um... I think we, we decided tonight that we're going to be tackling uh, the steampunk world that we were talking about last night, correct? Yes, sir. So I've never world world built with you specifically. I've, I've world built on my own before, so I'm curious how, how you how go much, about How it. much world building have you ever done before? Uh, quite a bit, um, just for fun. Um, maps, backgrounds, histories. I mean, for the cartoon, I wrote like a, a kind of like a short history for, for that world. Uh, I've wrote a couple of like fantasy world stuff for fun all through high school and college for creative writing and stuff. So I've done it a bunch, but usually it's unsurprising to you. Like probably just like lore and just story and stuff and less about less map structure. I don't really do too much mapping. Um, and I don't ever do it with a game in mind. You know what I mean? I always do it just for my own story that I'm looking to tell. It's cause you were wordy nerd. You yep. I, mean? I, I was exactly a nerd. Um, oh, so, so all nerds here, so that's but true. You're, you're a particularly wordy one. You're like, yes. I like history, and yep. and I, w I went to college for English. I went to college for English and history. Yes, <laughs> so uh, it's like kind of like the things that I'm I'm good at is is words and, and writing and, and making things up. Um, what about you? Uh, I'm sure you've done way more world building than me, and we've done it with D and D oh. in mind. So yeah, we all know that me talks good. So um, yes, you talks good. So I world build specifically with a game in mind and never just because I'm interested in building a world for funsies. <laughs> I always build it for with a game in mind. I never build quests uh, like, you know, like quests. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I was talking about, say, on the Wednesday show, the, um, <clears throat> the way that I would do things for um, Rise Story and whatnot is always just bullet points. Okay, I know what I want to do and I'm going to put bullet points to get there, da, da, da. But that's like in a preset world. When I set a campaign, a world that I actually build, I like to come up with the, um, like I said, uh, basic histories, basic timelines, where the races are, the significance of them is in the world, da 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 da, -da uh, and put that down on paper. So I make it a long form format. I never really had to before because I never really had to worry about somebody else seeing my notes. You know, right, I mean? right. Just like, yeah, yeah. I had it here and I had like the little bits to kind of get things up. As for maps, I don't map. <laughs> um, not, not because I don't like maps. I love maps. Um, I, I, I can draw stick figures. -ish. Yo, straight up. I, I, I would say for mapping, um, one of my favorite tools to use that I've used in the past just for fun is literally Dwarf Fortress. So Dwarf Fortress, is, if you don't know what Dwarf Fortress is, uh, it's a game that has been, it's free to play, been in development for like 20 plus years. It's less a game and more like a fantasy world simulator, and that's what they've, they've been going for. Um, and the way it generates the world is it, it, it actually tries and generates the world like 10, 20, 30 times before it comes up with something ideal. And then it'll run simulation of weather effects and all this stuff and create naturally occurring rivers and oceans and stuff. Like the, the map that it creates is as realistic as it can get. Uh, and I love using that as like just a map generator. Um, if, and, and you can plant the world onto that, but, uh, that, that's, that's something. Did you do a do. let's play on this? Uh, I never did a let's play on Dwarf Fortress. I did a couple of videos kind of just like gushing about what I love about that game though, and how deep and complex and interesting it is. Okay. Cause I know the name, but I think I know the name from you. I mean, Dwarf, you might know the name just because it's a game that's been around for a very, 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 very Who would time. I talk to that would play this game? Maybe yeah, Pat. Other, other than you, uh, maybe, 
maybe he i mean he was into retro games because he's like nine years older than me so they were weren't retro when when he was playing them you know what i mean like, it's one of those games that like i could sit here and talk about dwarf fortress for hours i i think dwarf fortress is a phenomenally interesting and complex game it is a simulator that that no other simulated game has ever reached the depths of yeah, yeah, yeah. um i mean each individual like what I lo- like when you generate a world, you generate, you dictate how many years of history you want to generate, uh, and each individual character is tracked. Every item that is created is tracked uh, throughout the world, and you can find like, and you can go through. Then after it's generated, you can just go and open up the history of the world and find when some magical artifact was created, who it was created by, and then find where it went and how it got there and what monsters got it during like a war or something, and it generates these wars and all these characters. It's yep. wild, man. It, it's such a cool. Uh, program. I fucking love it. That's cool. Well, uh, I can tell you that most recently, when I, because there's maps I needed to be worked on for a different game, I said, hey, control out Frank, I need a, a map. Um, here's some details. Creative liberties. Go. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> and that, that was, that was like, because again, the exact map and how it's situated and stuff like that has never really mattered to me. It's because, mm-hmm. like, you know, um, history can you can kind of like flesh that out as you need to. Usually, PCs aren't playing a game on a macro scale. They need to look at a, a map of a of a planet or even a continent. Yeah, you know they're usually barely looking at a map of a country. You know, yep. more, more you know depends on the game, right? <clears throat> so again, all right. So uh, we were talking about doing something that's kind of uh, world building in our uh, going for a steampunky s game. So yep. even if the, this game isn't the one that we play first, even if we do Star Wars or something else, we will eventually get around to play, playing it. You yes. know what I mean? Yep, yep. So uh, might as well start there. So uh, I suppose uh, the first thing that I always like to do is, uh, usually when I build anything, characters, whatever, I find something. I get like a, a bug, you know what I mean, like in my head. You know, mm-hmm. I, have, I have ADHD, and one of the things with ADHD is you have the uh, deficit um, the um, attention deficit, right? You're like, oh, I, I can't pay attention. But then like, you also have hyper focus. And so like, sometimes I get like a bug and I can't get this bug out of my head until I scratch it. It's so, like, I have to like delve into the, I call it the rabbit hole or I just like tumble forever until like I finally finished. Yeah. But usually that bug comes from some like twing of inspiration. So again, if it's like a character concept, I'll like be like, do, 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 do. I see like a picture online of like this picture, it's a character I need to create. And I'll be like, yeah. fuck sleep. <laughs> and, I, and I'll literally spend like the next nine hours making this character, despite like the fact that I'm like I really need sleep, and now I'm getting one hour instead of like the. Because well, then you I can't needed. you can't stop thinking about it is the problem. Exactly, it's like yeah. it's like if I lie down and close my eyes, I wouldn't be able to sleep anyways. So might as well work on it. Yeah. So um um usually what I do is so I suppose the bug is usually the start, and so I come up with a concept, an idea, like a feeling more than anything else of what I want to do. This one is um is the idea of running with a um. Um, a steampunky world. Yeah. So um, when you think steampunk, you know, obviously you have your mix of techno and magic. Um, the We've seen examples of this before. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist is a great one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you and I literally just talked about Iron Kingdoms last night. You got the PDF. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's a game that you've owned for a long time. I don't think we ever played it. No, we, uh, we never played it. We flipped through it a little bit and uh, we liked certain aspects and didn't like others, but... Shadow Run, which I believe you own the book to this... 20 uh, the uh the 20 fourth? version of it yeah the fourth, fourth edition, edition. Yeah. so that kind of so I, i'm going to turn this to you uh for this part this initial part because yep. like, we all understand what steampunk is for you ideal steampunk world uh what's the uh societal focus because obviously there's like schisms and whatnot here and there but like the societal focus like the big overall are people more pushing towards the machinations like the, the so the, 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 it's funny that you actually say that because my first question in my mind was if we were like, all right, we're going to approach this kind of as a blank canvas world that we're creating. The very first question I have as far as history is what came first? Was huh. magic always there? And then they eventually kind of created technology? Or did they get into the industrial era before magic was discovered? Because that mm-hmm. will completely dictate how the world is built from the ground up and how a culture is formed and uh, how reliant they are on magic or how reliant they are in technology. So yeah, that, that's my first question too. When, when we talk about steampunk is like, okay, what came first? Because that will heavily dictate how useful it is. Cause if we say uh, they hit the industrial revolution before magic was discovered, you're going to have people who will swear off magic right from the get go. They will never touch magic in their life. 
I know which one I prefer, but uh, so I already kind of have it in my head. But you please keep running with what you got. Uh, so you well, know, I already had it in my head. Yeah, no, no. I'm just saying like that. But if magic has been around since you know the ancient times and the industrial revolution happened after magic was around, then you're really not going to come across people who are going to be against magic. You'll have people who find technology more as um as a uh, an interesting kind of like novelty. You know, oh, technology, how novel. We have these spells that can do these wonderful things, but technology, in a very complicated way, can do the same thing magic can. Um, I don't know what one I prefer, to be honest. Uh, I think they both have their benefits. If I, if I had to pick one, one that I find more interesting, I think I would find technology first, magic second, the most interesting to build a world okay, from. Okay, cool. So uh, if we went magic first, technology second, my mindset would be, oh, it's Eberron. Like, like I agree. Because yeah, in yeah, Eberron, yeah. Uh, all the technological developments are magic used to make technological developments. You know what I mean? So, yes, they have machines and whatnot just to expand upon the magic that they've already done. And so everything is still magic in its in its most latent form. Whereas if you go technology first, um, I like the idea of technology, 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 kind of working through the industrial era that we had in the, you know, the, the actual planet yeah. uh, and uh, Western civilization, Earth. Um, but then, like, uh, much like how we always talk about, like, pollution and whatever that comes out of this, I almost imagine one of the pollutants that came out of the industrial era was magic. And that it took some brilliant person, some, like, genius person to realize, wait, what is this byproduct and how can we use it? There's something unique about it. And so that that's when they discovered this is magic in its most raw form and there they were able to kind of expand upon it and then it was mm -hmm. uh, a matter of you know at first it was again byproduct of making x created y you know what i mean yeah but now it's no now we can actually just make y be the product in which case then what is the byproduct of y what is z you know what i mean and so it, it can be like a a, a forward propulsing thing uh and i like the idea of doing that like you were just saying um the idea of magic being still kind of newish um, is is nice because you're going to have people that, again, swear off magic, like, oh, this is a, a nifty, cute little thing. What is this? And then they're going to be like whole societies of like, imagine if magic exists in real life. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't. But imagine if it did. You know, um, uh, every person that ever hoped that magic would exist would feel like, you know, oh, my God. This is like, there'd be like cult followings of, you know, and so it makes this really cool societal like bubbles would have form and, and whatnot from it. Um, but then you always think of your steam engine esque creatures, Warforged from uh, Eberron. Yeah. The idea that you have this, th these robots that you're already trying to create but never succeeded, but then you created them and threw magic into them, and now you've got this like, you know, automaton. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. So, so are we in agreement on that? Yeah, I think we're on agree in agreement that tech first, magic second is okay. probably the more interesting, intriguing option. How long ago did magic come about? Are we talking decade? Are we talking century? Like how uh, infused into history is magic? I would say probably about a century, because uh, that gives it gives it time for magic to influence rulers, uh, mayoral or kingdoms or whatever. If it was if magic's only been around for a decade or two. You're probably seeing magic influence rulership, but if magic's been around for about a decade, uh, then you have then you have the opportunity for rulers to have ruled with magic for decades, uh, and that'll create separate city states and that kind of thing. Um, Prior to the creation of magics, uh, did things like because we're going the industrial revolution era yeah, kind yeah. of is when it came out. That's uh, the general feel we're going with. Yeah, I think that's that's about right. So things like cannons and firearms and stuff like that existed prior to the creation of magic. Or the yeah, discovery yeah, yeah, of magic. yeah. I would say that. I would okay. say that for sure. How about races? How do you feel about that? I mean, are we going with the world was human and then magic somehow let other things in? Or are we going, no, 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 no. It's, it's fantasy, steampunky. They were always elves and dwarves and gnomes and shit. Maybe magic let other stuff out too. But yeah, I mean, so that's the other thing too. We could that that's interesting to debate or talk about. Um, because if we say yeah, elves and gnomes and stuff existed, um, then you have the question of like, well, did magic exist thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago and was completely forgotten and lost and only recently rediscovered, and that's why these other races exist and they could, you know, there's humans, there's elves, there's no, dwarves and gnomes and all this stuff. Um, and then magic was lost eons ago and only recently resurfaced, or do we go all humans or if, 
if we do go elves and dwarves and gnomes, like, does magic have to be involved with the reason that they're around? Um, I don't know. What are you? What are your thoughts actually on that? When you were describing that, it just makes me think of Full Metal Alchemist. You know what I mean with the split world. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, which I think is funny. Um, uh, no, yeah, I mean, it's magic has always existed. I, I think it's just one of those things where it's always been there. It's just whether that people have been able to tap it. Mm -hmm. The idea that for some reason it was lost at some point in time makes perfect sense. You know what I mean? It's like we still today discover things that people have known for, for ages, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, here's a, a really lame example. Uh, when I make kale smoothies, because sometimes I go through awesome kale smoothie kicks, I also put uh, what are they chia seeds inside there. The Aztecs were using chia seeds for their warriors thousands of years ago, and they knew of the benefits of chia seeds. Yeah. But we discovered it recently as a Western culture, like, what, 30 years ago or something? Yeah. I mean, you know, what I mean? You know and that, that for me, like, a lot of the fun part is, oh, if magic existed thousands of years ago, what caused it to be lost, you know? And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's, that's the point I was getting to is what was the downfall of magic? Why was it struck, uh, struck from the world? Now, if we're talking about magic and uh, uh, mechanics, are there gods? Is there divine energy? Are those gods like Eberron gods where you can worship a chair and if you believe hard enough that chair actually gives you magic? Um, or are they like Faerun gods where, dude, you worship a chair. That's not magic. You're wiggling your fingers and the mouse decided to fart on its own. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> uh, so. As far as my preference is concerned uh, in, in campaign settings, I like the idea of deities existing personally. Um Again, because that opens up doors, in my opinion, as far as, like, well, if deities exist or existed and then magic was struck from the world, did the deities also retract themselves from the world and what was the cause of that and why do, or why do they remove magic or why do they remove themselves? Um, there could be a whole lot of fun things you could do with that. And have, have the, with, with magic only recently reemerging, have the gods recently reemerged for the first time in thousands of years as well? So that, that begs the question, assuming there are gods, assuming the gods uh, are um, at least have emerged again, whether or not they've been there the whole time, who cares? Um, are they uh, very relevant gods, like gods that you could bump into the avatar of? Mm -hmm. Again, maybe not so as often as Faerun, right, but right. a god wherein you could actually bump into its avatar? Or are they like, yeah, there's gods that exist, you and I know that because we're creating the world, but like players don't know them generally now, it's their epic level. Like, what do you think? I don't know. Either I don't like the, I don't like the ideas of like like know. are they Greek gods or are they like the Christian god? You no, know, I know like, I know what you're getting at. Nobody sees the Christian god, but everybody saw the Greek gods. You probably had three of their kids. Chat says, "Why not do incomprehensible Lovecraftian gods, bringing back magic with them?" That could be an interesting twist as well, actually. Yeah. Never really thought of it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't like the idea of like Faerunian gods. Like Faerunian gods are. The idea, cartoony. like, they're cartoony, but they fit that world. Faerun is a very cartoony fantasy world. Um, there's, there's, there's a nice middle ground, I think, between like Christian gods and Faerunian gods. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, occasionally, very rarely will a god make contact with the mortal plane, but mm -hmm. there are accounts of that happening. Um, but it doesn't happen often. That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So okay, I guess cool. I err on the side of Christian God, you know, as as it were, as it works. But it doesn't just have to be Christian. It could be you as know, I'm just you know using that as one of the three example. sisters. You know, any one of those religions, they're all the same. It's all the same God. Chad also religion. asks um, somebody in NASA, uh, did the discovery of magic halt the advance of technology? Uh, I would say no. Um, yeah, uh, I would. I would, say, I would say I would say that. Let's say, for instance, we have like. Uh, the advancement of technology was mostly being spearheaded by 10 primary companies. Like, we're the ones that did it. They're the ones that either were independently wealthy enough to always push things forward and generate their own profits, or were uh, a small group of merchants that ran a company and maintained blah, 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 blah. And with the uh, discovery of magic, possibly, like, three of them have completely sworn off. I'm just arbitrary numbers. This might not be what we settle with. Yeah, yeah. Three of, of them have pretty, pretty much sworn off the development of technology in and of itself and just work towards how do we get more magic and then when they've been able to create magic in and of itself as opposed to using it just as a byproduct uh focused on that specifically and they focus on developments more or less making the first arcane schools um uh we'll just again arbitrary number four of them were like eh, fuck this magic thing we're just or sorry even two of us say fuck this magic thing we're just gonna like focus on technology that's our thing and then the remaining four or five sorry math what did i say originally ten three three 
three. and two. It's yeah. five. So the reigning five would yeah. be like, we do a blend of the two. And right. that's where you have like cannons with like, you know, uh, cannons that could summon cannonballs. You yeah, know, yeah. And, like, Magical pistoliers and all that kind yeah. of thing. So, so again, and that's all arbitrary numbers. But I imagine it's not like all one way, all another way, just two ways. There's going to be a blend. There's always going to be a gray area. And yeah, I of love, course. I love the model of gray. You know what I mean? Yeah. I agree. Um, so let's uh, do a, just start writing some of this stuff down so we at least have like a baseline. Absolutely. I forgot to load that up. Um, give me one second. Obsidian portal. What? Why are you going there? Shh. It's not happening. <laughs> um, totally not making another campaign in Obsidian portal. Not Gosh. happening. No. You probably no. have like nine campaigns at least right Don't now. Don't worry about it. That's what I'm just saying. Shh. Where is it? Make a new campaign. I always forget. Um, make new. New campaign. Campaign name. Do we have a name for it yet? No, not yet. Just, just steampunk. Steampunk. Because I can always change the uh, URL for it. Right, right. Wrong. Would Warforges be byproduct form? Fra, would would Warforges be b a byproduct from magic reemerging, or made by people using magic when it, it, after the reemergence? Um, I mean, there's probably both. I uh, there's probably examples of both. I mm -hmm. guess it depends on how the magic reemerged and did it come out in like a a way that was uncontrollable? Was it a resource? Like, did we tap into ley lines? That is that how we discovered it? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that question as. I'll get back to you on that one. Right, and that's exactly. because we're ground up world building. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Very much an I'll get back to you on that one. So uh, let me go over to the wiki area of this, and we're going to start setting some shit up. So uh, the first thing that we're going to set up in my uh, area. Um, so, Mathis. Uh, Hello. The world, we're saying it was, um, you know, do uh, a page called Ages. Um, page called Tech. Uh, page called Magic. I'm gonna uh, invite you to this in a second, uh, even though you'll probably never look at it for a long time. I was gonna do most of the writing. Uh, Ages Tech Magic uh, races. I'm gonna clean it up later on. Um, I think that's all we need right now. Anything else that you can think of? No. Yo, gotta... Why is my internet so shitty right now? It's getting internet connection is unstable. Yeah, I'm so getting awful. that too, actually. Oh, are you? Yeah, that's really weird. I keep getting okay. this thing on my monitor that says internet connection unstable. Yeah. I wonder yeah, if that's it's Zoom. It's a Zoom pop-up. No, my, I, I did a quick stream earlier, and oh my god, it was garbage. Like, absolute garbage. I wonder if the weather is affecting it, though. That'd be weird. Mathis. Oh, Mathis Games. There you are. And then, because it never works, so I just send it. I'm going to send a reminder. Send a reminder. Send a reminder. And you no know, rush, you'll get there when you get there. Sounds good to me. Okay. All right, ages. So for ages, we're gonna have um, uh, pre-tech. Uh, then we're gonna have, um, was it like industrial? Yeah, like the industrial revolution, more or less. And discovery of magic. And then now, again, everything can be cleaned up later on. All right, so um, during this time, the magic of disco the discovery of magic. Let's talk about that for a second, and then we're gonna because then we're just gonna roll into talking about races. Um, how was magic discovered? What actually, what was the thing that caused magic to be created as a byproduct? I mean, that's that's a good question. Um... So you, you, you're saying magic is discovered as a byproduct. Like, elaborate what you mean by that. So, you know, most of the greatest, uh, uh, many of the greatest uh, scientific discoveries that have ever been created were done so by accident. Like, Correct. Um, yeah. Like, like, we use ammonia in everything. Like, fucking everything. Uh, I, the, the creation, of, the ability to create ammonia in a, uh, a, uh, a factory has allowed us to make things as small as Windex. You know what I mean? Mm. To as great as we feed the planet. Um, so you're saying, 
magic was like an accidental discovery from somebody who was so doing... the, cre- the the ability to create ammonia was an accidental byproduct of doing something else right and so yay now we can create ammonia and now we nitrogenize soil to feed the planet you know what i mean like that, that, that that's kind of like how it goes so they were working on something else whatever that thing was oops we discovered magic now they probably were making magic for a long while and it was having a negative reaction. I actually have this kind of idea and this uh, lays in with uh, somebody in chat, whoever it was that suggested um, going with uh, Lovecraftian-esque gods. Um, the first magic that was discovered was necromancy. Mm, okay. And the reason why the reason why I want to go with this is magic has been around for a hundred years. I like the idea that no, whatever it was that they were doing that discovered magic has been around for longer. It's just much like corporations in, in real life, right? Um, the byproduct was killing the people in ways that they couldn't figure out. And so uh, the byproduct that was coming out was necromancy, literally eating away at people's souls and whatnot and destroying them. But they kind of like buried it under the carpet. And then eventually when somebody did enough discovery, they were able to realize there was more than just that there. If they just changed the way that they were doing whatever this was slightly, instead of necromancy coming out, other school of magic was to come out, so on and so forth. We don't have to go with your standard Dungeon Dragon schools of magic, but we all understand the difference between negative versus positive versus this versus that, right? So Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, we're building a world. Uh, I, I guess, yeah, that doesn't matter. We're building a world that can hopefully just fit into whatever rule system we choose to play it in. Whatever rule system we choose to play in, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, actually, I think in Iron Kingdoms, there was like a rule with necromancy, wasn't it? Uh, let me check the PDF. I think there was like an actual specific rule, like it was super illegal, and like I think there there was like a, a penalty to casting with it. But that's just top of my head from us having a conversation eight years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so continuing on, I like the idea that whatever it was that they were working on did this. So what were they working on, Mike? What what was the is this a material? Know, is this like a an ore they were mining from deep down in the 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 earth, a specific type of um of like ferrous material? I feel like that's the easiest explanation. It's super easy to be like, they were mining and they kind of hit like a ley line or something, like you said, a material that... Uh... Ooh, what about crystals? Like maybe they had discovered a new type of uh, of crystal that was a uh, like a superconductor. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but the thing is like these crystals were actually, are not, are not just superconductors, but like they are effectively magic crystallized. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so by working on them, they were releasing the natural magics that were in them. They didn't realize that that's what it was. And now they've realized that these crystals can power everything. My only, again, uh, hold back to that is crystals are such an important part of Eberron. I was going to say that. That's like, like, yeah, that's, that's very Eberron esque. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be a crystal. It could be a specific type of metal, which is one of the reasons why when you think of magic items, what is a magic item? Well, there's a war forged made out of metal. There's right, a, right. A, a, a magic pistolier with guns made out of metal. So basically, oh, a magic a, sword. So basically, they discovered a certain type of metal. Foxford saying a superconductors for arcane energy is like a metal that's like a superconductor yeah, of some like they, sort. They thought it was a superconductor of electricity or their earlier forms of electricity, right? But there, it was also it also is like a harder, like a almost like a either magic made material mm-hmm. you know like like magic materialized so condensed like uh imagine like a uh like air you know it gets so uh condensed to become solid right yeah um um or like uh, just like a super magnet for magics right right yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so the discovery of like a new ore that yeah. that metal and uh just easily attracts magical energies or what what have you Okay, so then that being said, let's say there is this ore. Um, uh, how long has this ore been known of? Uh, sorry, not how long has it been known of, I'm sorry. Um, uh, is this the only type of ore that can attract magic? Or are there nuanced different types of ores that attract different types of magic? Just like there are different qualities of iron you can mine. Would this also mean that all wizards and whatever would have to have this metal on them in order to cast spells? Um, in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, to cast spells, you have to have material components or an arcane focus. Yeah. To be a, a cleric casting spells, you have to have your divine focus. Right, right. So we're saying this because that would limit, I don't want to say limit. In Harry Potter, you have to have a magic wand <laughs> that has built into it an arcane, uh, arcane focus. Arcane focus, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would, that I, I would. Don't <laughs> I don't think it's limiting at all. 
I imagine that a wizard's book um, has the, mm. the the words in the book are written in an ink that is comprised of a uh, powdered version of this metal. Yeah. But, no, no, I, I like no, I like that. I, I'm not saying that I like that. I, I don't like that. I actually really like that idea. Uh, it would also immediately create competing companies selling that particular metal mm. and claiming theirs is better than others and this, that, and the other. Theirs is finer, or purer. This answers it, uh, one of my questions. So we're going to go with the metal. Uh, chat, if you can help us come up with a name for this metal, uh, assuming there's only one type of metal in the world. And then you get like wants different one, differences. A shitty, black, a shitty black market version of the metal that gives you penalties while casting, but allows you to cast even if you're not a caster. Yeah, yeah it's like, it's like uh, if I remember correctly, like there's this one mountain range in Japan that has the highest quality, least, um, uh, like the highest quality steel in the world. Right, mm. uh, that are say iron in the world, and it's made for used for making like the best steel and whatnot. But there are other mines throughout the planet that have other quality iron. I imagine some like I just get a really shitty version, you know. But this answers one of my questions. There are other races; they have existed for a long time. Dwarves have actually been using this metal for a very, very long time and didn't realize that what it was is magical. They just understood that dwarven products were always the best, and nobody knew why. Because dwarven products have had a small amount of this metal thrown into it. Because again, what is what is um, smelting? It's mixing of different alloys together to make, right? Um, uh, sorry, to make different alloys or whatever. Hi, Maggie. So, what's up, Mags? Um, so the um, uh, so somebody so brings the, up a the good... dwarves have been doing this for a long time, which is why their materials have always been best. Someone brings ahead. up a good point, though. If we go this route then magic wouldn't have to be some innate ability. It would just be some physical tool that anybody could use. Uh, not entirely true. Um, you're talking about sorcerers versus wizards. Um, one, uh, can who can use those tools? Uh, well, it requires training, just like in any other campaign system. If you're playing a wizard type character, it requires an intense amount of training to be able to use the magics that are uh, latent in da 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 da. I imagine the wizards use the uh, metal laden words um, as like a conduit to say the words, to use the innate magics that have been released into the atmosphere. Um, my example for this, and I, again, pulling from real life, um, uh, it's called lead, like United States, the rest of the planet, but the United States had a serious fucking lead problem, uh, a yeah. hundred years ago, way less than a hundred years ago, 50, uh, 40 years ago. I think it went away. What was it 1976? 1979, something like know. that is when the lead laws changed. 1979, somewhere in there? Somewhere around there, yeah. Um, uh, prior to that, lead was so bad because it was in every product that existed everywhere, uh, in the paint in your walls and the food that you ate, the containers that held it. It was so everywhere that it was literally in the air. Well, whatever it was that they were mining, the byproduct, or have been mining, the byproduct of it is so infested into the air, you can learn to manipulate that the correct way. Wizards can do so. I imagine sorcerers aren't just born from the backwatered woods of nowhere. No, sorcerers are born from inner city areas that are right next to these manufacturing plants. You know what I mean? These plants with a big billowing smog coming out of their smokestacks. Uh, you know, mothers are breathing it in for a hundred years now, like generations, right? Yeah. And the infants are breathing it in, and that's where the latent magic comes from. It becomes infused into their body, giving them this power. So yes, it can still be innate. Um, but not because of your race, because of your exposure. Um, another example of that would be Izo in Mass Effect. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you do you agree with this, disagree with this, love it, hate it, shoot? Meh. No, no, I, I like it. I'm just trying to think. Because um, magic is a manipulation of this essence in the air, you're saying, right? I'm sorry? Magic is the manipulation of this metal in the air, this latent metal in the air, right? Is that well, what you're saying? Well, I mean, the, the, the magic has then been released. It's it's now everywhere. It's okay. the metal as a super conduit. It's like the super magnet that pulls okay, it okay, to okay. you. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Nope, okay, so, that makes sense to me. Nope, nope, I'm yep. good. Um, or maybe magic users take the metal into their bloodstream, and this, combined with training and ability, leads them to being able to use a magic energy. I totally see there being, like, somebody where you can get, like, an operation done, you know? And yeah, yeah. Like, it's like you literally have like go through a procedure where they're injecting liquid versions of this metal into you, and at the end of like a month long procedure, you gain the ability to. You're like a you know yeah abilities. like a uh, like a yeah it's best like a makeshift sorcerer kind of thing. 
again, all this, the, because we're doing this in a steampunk world and the way we're kind of creating magic here, it's like, it's ripe for capitalism. <laughs> and just, and like, every opportunist under uh, under the sun trying to sell their own version uh, uh, and make a quick buck off of magic, more or less. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, fucking really. It's great. I love it. Yeah, I'm it. into it too. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, I'm down for that. I'm down okay. for the way that magic so works. So did we get examples of somebody said, uh, oh, Breland, we are not naming it after you. We are we are not naming. Uh, he's the one that I told you dropped the Trump card last week and killed one of my PCs. Oh, but, okay. So, so, so yeah, no. Uh, no. Uh, someone said Netherium, uh, Zion Metal. Um, someone said you call the crap version of it that's sold in the black market slag. I actually really oh, like that term. I love that. Yeah, me too. Oh, my God. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I like slag. Like, write like that down. Just slag. write slag. Yep, slag, absolutely. Let me go back. Slag came there. from um, Jimbo169. So it's called the crap metal slag, which I like. Uh, Arcanite, Arcanium, Sorcerite, so, uh, Sorcerium. Sla how, how's uh, slag two Gs? One G. One G? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how would Warlock work? Well, this is, right now, Elof, we're not really building it around the D&D rule set. We're kind of building yeah. a world that, that we can then retrofit into whatever rule system we want. Yeah. Uh, as I'm, not, I'm not worried about uh, concepts like Warlocks. In my opinion, like, if you're not playing Dungeons and Dragons, a fucking cleric is a Warlock. You sold your soul, man. I don't care. I don't care what you say. A cleric, a paladin, uh, they sell their soul to have the power that they have. You know what I mean? With their, with their, uh, with their, you know, uh, faith. Uh, warlocks do the same thing, but instead of to gods, they do it to um, uh, other internal uh, creatures. So sex says, uh, if magic only started to exist, how has society been dealing with giants and trolls, or do they not exist in this world? So that, that's bringing me that I was getting to when we kind of sidetracked again. Keep seeing if you see a great idea for the different tiers of metal. Let me know, or yeah, is yeah. its raw name. So getting back to it. Um, the uh definitely there was more than just humans um uh dwarves have definitely existed for a long time because like i said they've been mining with this and i actually imagine excuse me when this discovery happens um things changed because whereas dwarves always had the best quality product when this happened i imagine that there was a merger like coming to this realization uh, that holy crap, this metal has more than just making high quality products. It is magic involved in it too. And the best mines of this belong to the dwarves. We usually buy the ore off of the mines and use that for our manufacturing. I imagine a couple of the companies merged and bought out the dwarven mines to take it from them before they fully realized what it was that they had. And now dwarves in general, uh, because of like the like very quickly in the very recent past, I've gone from like, oh, you know, they're just living their normal lives, capitalist, blah, 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 to the mines were all bought out from under them and they were like either kept as low wage workers uh, mm -hmm. in the mines or completely shoved out of them entirely. And so dwarves have been in the past hundred years less than have gone from like being a perfectly normal accepted race to being super disenfranchised. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I, I look because in what world are the dwarves the disenfranchised ones? You know what I mean? Usually they're well, relatively well respected. In the so Dragon like, Age Origins world and in the Witcher world. Okay, Witcher world, yes. Dragon Age Origins, they are they? Yeah, I think dwarves are pretty they, disenfranchised. They have like two in kingdoms in there. Yeah, they don't don't dwarves have kingdom? Uh, do they? Well, they have one kingdom, I think, in Dragon Age. I I, I beat the first one. But I can't remember. Which one was the first one? Just called Dragon Age. Dragon Age. Dragon Age Origins is what it was called. I beat that one. But I didn't play the second one. Because, like, elves were called knife ears and that kind uh, of thing. Uh, Anything that racist. wasn't human was looked down. Yeah, very. Okay, anyway. Uh, yes, uh, that's fine. Um, so, so moving on. Uh, trolls uh, have existed for a long while. But do we go trolls, like D&D-style trolls, where they're, like, super regenerative and extremely fucking dumb? Or do we go with trolls having been building their own society, much like um, uh, World of Warcraft-like trolls? Um, I don't know. We kind of need we kind of need to make sure we have monster races kind of just wandering around. So stupid, dumb, angry trolls. Not everything needs to have a society, especially if we're gonna have elves, dwarves, gnomes, halflings, all that stuff. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, so I, I'm of, of the mindset of kind of keep them as dumb monsters that kind of just rampage in the wilds. Okay. So trolls are dumb monsters or rampages in the wilds. Okay. So uh, dwarves, they had the best minds. They've been recently disenfranchised. How about elves? Where, where are they in society? 
I mean, I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. Something that we need to tackle. It's, is that something we want to tackle now, or do we want to keep laying the... Good point. Why don't we just uh, slap up some races that we want as our basic races that are... Yeah. You know, we're not playing Dungeons & Dragons, so you don't eat, gnomes don't even have to fucking exist. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. So we're not playing D&D. &D. Um, uh, so we're definitely going to have dwarves. You can't not. Definitely going to have elves. You can't not in any form of game like this. Uh, definitely have humans. Again, you can't not. Um, uh, any other races that stand in your mind that you like, let's just put this on the list that you have to have. Uh, I think halflings. I like halflings a lot. Okay. That sh having that short kind of quirky race is always good to have. Keep placing everything but brackets. Um, halflings, gotcha. Uh, I'm trying to think what other race. Oh, orcs. Orcs are fun. Uh, with a orcs. C or a K? Oh, it doesn't. C, fine. doesn't matter. Uh, or is it O-R-Q-U-E? No, all right. Well, not all que. <laughs> orcs. <laughs> no, I get what you're saying, but no. <laughs> maybe maybe the orcs are like the pinkies in the air. Right? The yeah, they're, they're very they, fancy. They, they are the super capitalists. You know <laughs> what I mean? The orcs are the ones sitting on the top of society. Right? We are the orcs. <laughs> Um, Do you mind me asking what we're building a world for? Can hardly be here since this is the middle of the night for me. Uh, future campaign, campaign setting that we are, um, will eventually tackle at some point. Kind of just shooting the shit uh, and, and building for fun. It's either our next campaign system that we're going to be playing in, setting that we're going to be playing in, or one in the near future, um, or in the future, I should say, for Lost Nation. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Uh, last one, just because it's going to pop up a couple times in chat. How do you feel about kobolds or draconic races in general? Or dr dragons in general? Uh, I'm fine with them. Uh, we just need an explanation for their existence. Creatures of legend that haven't been seen in, Aeon in, in eons? Nothing but stories? Or, oh, dude, a dragon just flew by. I don't know. E either one is kind of cool, actually. Um... I like the idea of them being like, Creatures of legends. Dragons haven't been seen in in eons, but you know they tell stories like you, you, just like you know the boogeyman or whatever. You, you hear stories of dragons. Yeah, I mean that's fine with me. Happy to go that, go that route. In kin, things like kobolds. Fuck dragonborn. <laughs> so what about kobolds? Are you saying? Yeah, and, and dragonborn. That that concept. Are you saying they're gone as well? Or are you asking? I'm, I'm asking. Um. Uh, I don't mind that they, they exist, because they're at least evidence that dragons maybe once existed. Okay. But they're long gone. But drag, a full-fledged dragon hasn't been seen in a long time. Okay, cool, thanks. All right, moving on. So what's next that we're working on? So we got a list of races. Uh, we've got the world and uh, kind of just gone from technology and then magic discovered. We've got the conduit of magic itself and what, how it was discovered. Um... What is next as far as that is concerned? So um, let's talk about the, because it's important to actually build the world. Um, what is the ruling uh, race? Are we going humans are the ruling race in this in this world? I think just for ease, humans is, is always like a really safe bet. You can relate to humans easier. And that's important as a player. Um, even though almost everybody ever plays one. Um, it's true. Uh, one second. Sex says he loves Dragonborn, especially Dragonborn Bard. Um, that's nice. <laughs> People. Why does Scott hate Dragonborn? Abusive. Uh, says, asks. Why do you um, hate them? Yeah, factions is the point that I was getting to. Abusive. That's a. That's a. The what I was alluding to, but I like, couldn't say that. Um, so why don't I, I, I just don't like ridiculous looking races. I think it breaks the, uh, the, the game. I think it makes it, I, I think it makes it goofy. You know what I mean? Like, like the idea that, uh, you're supposed to have this, this small farming village that's just, you know, quiet people just trying to live their lives. And, and, not, and then a dragonborn character comes walking in like, Oh, Hey guys, I'm here to help you out. I won't eat your sheep. And they're all like, oh, this is fine. This guy can sit in the bar. We don't have negative feelings towards the person that has a ginormous tail that weighs more than both my legs put together. Yeah, that's fine. That's that's normal. Perfectly. Like, to me, it's it's so cartoony. 
Dragon Ball characters are so fucking cartoony, and the modern day looking uh, Typhlin characters are so cartoony, they break immersion for me. I, I'm just like, that. that is like that. They're no. very video gamey. Yeah, very video gamey. It's like a troll character walking into town. So Scott's no. a literal racist. <laughs> but, but, but like in real life, no. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is like in real life, like you look at all the different types of humans and elves and whatnot, uh, races that have like proven themselves to be goodly over the course of um, eons or whatever. Good. But then you look at, you know, again, you're literally part demon. Literally part demon. Oh, what does that mean? It means you have fucking evil in your blood. Not like, oh, come on, man. That's not actually... No, it's literally the plane of evil is in your blood. Literally the plane of evil. Yeah, but I try really hard to be good. I'm struggling with this inner turmoil. So you mean at any point in time you can fucking snap? Awesome. I totally want you in my small town. <laughs> sounds great. Sounds awesome. How am I going to defend myself against you? A pitchfork and a torch? Cool, because you have innate fucking magic that can literally kill everybody. Want you in my town. Nope, get out. And and so for me, again, it breaks the immersion to have those characters just like walk into any town. In my opinion, almost every town would be like, no, get out. And there would be the rare town would be like, no, it's cool, you know, as long as you don't do anything wrong. But you have to accept that as a player. Like most towns are going to hate you. And every once in a while, you're going to find someone that's like, no, nah, I knew a Dragonborn growing up. They're cool people. You know, it's just uh, it's like y y it just like towns don't accept kobolds and they come walking in because of their experience of kobolds in the past. You know, this isn't racism like real life racism, real life racism. We're all fucking human. If you think that because somebody's skin color is different, there's something wrong with you. Um, these are actual different things. You know yeah, what I mean? No, no, I get so. what you're saying for sure. Um, the question so, is, did, did the reemergence of magic bring about tieflings and shit? So did the rumors of magic touched people? Uh, I imagine very recently, absolutely. Uh, however, uh, my opinion of Tiflings is most of them don't look like Tiflings. You know what I mean? They don't have these big, huge horns growing out of their head. This isn't fourth edition Dungeons and Dragons. You know what I mean? Like they don't have to look like uh, the monster from Legend. Right, um, right. So um, subtler touches. Yeah, exactly. Uh, things like you can hide a cloven foot if you put it inside of a boot. You know right. what I mean? You, but you don't have to have a huge tail whipping around and like caressing people. You know? <laughs> yeah. All, um, all anime style. Yeah, exactly. Moving on. Um, uh, so uh, let's see. What were we just talking about? Factions. Fa factions, I think, initially. And before factions, what was the thing that led to that? Dragonborn, Dragonlance, what happens? Name. I don't remember what we were talking about that led to that. We were just talking. Uh, we were just kind of listing the things that we've done and what we're going to do next. Okay. So, um, so let's talk about the factions. Um, uh, the way it needs to work. Out, so, on planet, uh, I'm just going to grab details of the planet really because for me, I like to macro to micro. Um, uh, planet size. Do you want to go Earth size, or do you want to go larger, or do you want to go smaller? That doesn't really bother. Like that doesn't matter to me too much. Um, Earth size is like fine. What's Faerun or bigger? Bigger. Yeah. Oh or, no, uh, no. Sorry, my apologies. Not true. Uh, fake news. Um, uh, Aber and Toril are the same planet. They schismed. Remember, you just right. learned this recently yep, yep. on Wednesday. So, um, so uh, Aber is actually Earth. Yep. And Toril is is Forgotten Realms, the planet that's set on. They were the same planet, so they're actually 100% identical. Um, it's just the difference is uh, when they, they split around the ages of Pangea, and then because they one has like gone through different experiences than the other one with tectonic plate movements and whatnot, that's why Earth looks like Earth, and um, Toril looks Earth-like. Yeah. You know, when you have spells changing tectonic I, plates. You know. Earth size works for me. Okay. I might boot up Dwarf Fortress and have it generate a world. So uh, Earth size, so you deal with things like uh, Earth gravity, all that stuff. Da -da -da -da. You don't have to worry about anything funky. Cool. Uh, with it being Earth size, how many major continents? I don't know. How many major continents? <clears throat> I mean, also, it depends on like how you define a continent, because like the way we define continents on literal Earth is a little funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Europe is its own continent. 
you know, Very it's not true. its own body of lands, but sorry, cool. I'm, I'm downloading for Dwarf Fortress to gen. I'll have it generate us a world. How's that? Sure, go right ahead. And I'll hook you up with the map after. Awesome. So that'll give us uh, continents, countries. So th th does that define lines for countries, or we're gonna have to do that? We would have to do that. That's fine. Cool. It, it, it's gonna have like roads and stuff because it like it's gonna have civilizations that are we're trading with one another, but you can ignore the roads. I'm of just... course. <clears throat> Yeah, you could roll. So, you could roll uh, a d10 if you wanted to, or something for number of continents or whatever. Um. So let's see factions. Uh, let's talk about these factions. Uh, first of all, the uh, different types of factions you're going to come across is, of course, uh, government leaders based off the countries, right? Yeah. Um. If I could spell governments correctly. Hang on, guys. I'm gonna lower that real quick. Lower what? Dwarf Fortress. It's loud. I'm turning turn the volume off. Gotcha. Um, let's see. You need the the companies. Um, you're gonna need the faiths, because obviously religion is gonna be a huge thing with a uh, rise of of that kind of magic. And then you're gonna need your arcane schools. Um, are they gonna be known as arcane schools? I mean, that's, that's, who knows? That's what I'm asking. I'm asking. I mean, do you I... want them to, because they're not schools. Let's be serious. They're companies. But um, are they going to push themselves, or oh, colleges? There we go. Arcane colleges? Or universities? Yeah, I think arcane colleges, universities would make more sense. I mean, again, they're not. They're companies. But, you know, obviously, it's, a, it's all about marketing, right? Um, anything else? Any big factions? And of course, you have, you know, like. All right, skills let's generate stuff. a large region. Go. Market institutions, secret organizations. Of course, there'll be secret organizations. Um, some of it's just a sequel of a system getting closer to Mars, but Mincer. Um, does make it easier for travel. All right, so let's talk about these companies. We're going to need crests for them and everything. So, um, how many major companies do you want to have, Mathis? I mean, that's just kind of like an arbitrary number to be pulling out of our butt right now, right? It is, but it becomes important later on. Um, one of the things that you will learn if you ever um, play Eberron is the number 13 is a very important number. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're not, we're not going to do that, but... Well, instead of picking a number first, why don't we build companies first and have the number kind of naturally come from that? Sounds great. Uh, are the dominant race just because that's the easiest way to do things, like you had said? Um, so what's the human company? You are uh, you're we'll breaking up like crazy. God, I have to restart my modem, in which case you're gonna have to go without me for a couple minutes. Yeah, you're yeah, you're getting very robotic and getting cut off constantly. I'm gonna have to redo my modem. This has been bad today. Okay, can we uh, do you want to just hit a break? Uh, yeah, sure. I got, I'm gonna, I'll leave this up for people to see the world being generated, and I'll, I'll mute us and be good to go. Sure, oh, okay, then you don't have to be a, necessarily going on break, but I will. Alright, bye, I'll be right, right back. Alright, sounds good. Alright, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go let this generate, guys, and I'm gonna, I'll be back myself.
Hey, everybody. Scott's still missing. Oh, and because he disappeared, my cameras are all messed up. But we can fix that later. Oh, man. I love Dwarf Fortress. <laughs> I need to play it more. I love the... Uh, I don't want to say I love the idea. I actually really do like Dwarf Fortress a lot. Um, and what it's able to do. It's crazy, man. It's absolutely crazy. It's one of my favorite... It's one of my favorite games that I'll never really put, you know, enough time into to learn it all. But the fact that it can just generate a world, you know, and, and create a history for it and track everything that's lived and died and items and everything, it's, it's, it's nuts. It's crazy. And, like, Dwarf Fortress is such a cool just tool to use. Like, you can just use this as a map generator, which is really neat. All right. While we wait for Scott, I will uh, I will disappear for a bit.
Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome back. We're going to minimize this, put this down here. People to, while it generates. We're in this the... Uh, how long does that take? Depends on how many years of history it's doing. Uh, I don't know how many years of history this, uh, the set I put up is. Where is the... I can't click on it. Oh, there it is. Uh, right now, it's in year 310 in the Age of Myth. Um, whoops, it's gone. So, uh, my internet speeds, and I just tested on three different sites. My downloads peak at like 280 something. Okay. You know what I mean? Like you see it bouncing around. Um, we, for downloads, so 280 something peak, but we drop as low as like 180 something, which you're like, 
that's a big fucking range. Yeah. <laughs> like, why don't we just mellow out around 2.30 and call it a day? <laughs> um, but okay. Uh, and then my upload speeds would be like 14, nope, 2, 14, nope, 1.1. 1. 1, oh, no. 12, 1, 12, 1.3. Uh. It's, like, it's like all over the map. It's like your average is 8. And I'm like, no. That's terrible. No. no, no let's, technically, yes, but no. Uh, <laughs> that's rough. Uh, fuck Comcast? So, yeah, agreed. Fuck Comcast. They're terrible, mm -hmm. dude. Yeah, I don't know. I might have actually done, like, too big of a world. We'll see how long it takes. But right now, we're in the year 321 in the Age of Myth. Um, there's been 439,000 recorded events, 21,063 recorded dead. Uh, and we're current. it's currently focused right now on the human hamlet of Pyrneoth, Pyrneoth Threat within the Belted Steps. Sure. <laughs> That's that's what that's what's on screen right now. Moving on, so I was uh, just because I was fiddling with the idea of of obnoxious um, uh, races while I was grabbing stuff from my car and whatnot. This was rebooting. Um, uh, I was like, you know, what'd be nifty uh, if our take on doing things like let's say genocide or genocide or whatever you want to call it, if that kind of race was to be included into the world is that they were born a different race, but then later on infused with magics. And you can do this with a lot of things. Magics are infused later on as supposed to be born in a way. So anytime you're one of these uh, other races, it's like chosen to be that way as opposed to this is what I was born with. Uh, and the reason why I like the idea of doing that is because it almost makes it like in many sides, just peoples that are like, they choose to like replace a limb with like a robotic one or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like... um to some degree, like a, a, a badge of honor or of wealth or of status, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But to another degree, people are like, oh, no, I'm Puritan. You know, I am I am unkissed by such magics. <laughs> you know, that kind of dynamic. I, just something that tickled me, nothing to really focus on. Yeah. So, companies, um, let's talk about that. Did you have any good chats while I was gone? Uh, no, I, I actually took a break and went to the bathroom. So, <laughs> uh, And then when I came back... Uh, we're just talking to chat about people were just talking about Dwarf Fortress. So I was talking to them about Dwarf Fortress. Cool. So, um, let's talk about the companies because that's going to be a huge driving factor in this world. The companies that run the things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, like you said, let's design companies and see how things kind of flesh out on their own, right? Yeah, I, I agree. That's, that's probably the better way to do it. Um, the first company that we should probably discuss is going to be the awful company. The one that's like, everybody knows they're an awful company, but like they're, they're so important for what needs to be done. Um, that it doesn't matter how awful they are. It doesn't matter how known awful they are. They're still talked about in a good light all the time. Yeah. You're talking like the, the, the Exxon mobile BP kind of companies. You know what I mean? Like the, yeah, no, they're fucking horrible. And they just do bad things, but you need them, and and they they allow the world to turn. So, um, so let's talk about this company. Um, one, do you do you want to come up with a name first? How do you do these things? Uh, okay. no, uh, not necessarily. Um, so this is evil company. It's the one that's objectively evil of the companies, and then we can kind of worry about the gray ra uh, gray areas afterwards. Because there's no, not going to be any objectively good companies. Are they? Are some of these companies going to run their own city states? Um, That'd be a corporatocracy. Yeah. Uh, not all of them are going to. Not every city state is going to be run by a company. Obviously. No, I got you. Because I was, I was thinking very much like originally. I was thinking very much like a more of an oligarchy where it was like. The companies run things, but not directly. Just like they pay for things to happen, and they happen. Um, I mean, I'm the sure there's there's there being there's different cities that do oligarchies and or different no, no, countries no, no, rather. Is it, wasn't Shenra? Didn't Shenra have a? You talk about Final Fantasy VII? VII? Oh God, it's been so long. I don't remember. What, was that a corporatocracy? I don't remember. <laughs> I, I don't remember if they ran the actual city or not. I thought they did. My chat's not popping up, by the way. So if people are talking, I'm not seeing it. I'm just seeing. Okay. Other well, people are chatting. Oh. So. 
I, I can't remember if that was a uh, so I, I we should definitely have at least one of those yeah you know what I mean definitely at least have one of those um okay oh chat's working now yay yeah okay so let's do one of those definitely um uh what's so the, the one of the companies so we're gonna call it company a uh what, how do I do this h h dot one uh, like this, I believe. Um, what about a city state that banned technology, like a majocracy or something? Yeah. I mean, I, mean, uh, I don't, I, I mean, uh, a whole city state, no. Uh, small groups of people that are anti, you know what I mean? Definitely factions that feel that way, but I don't see an entire city state that's anti-technology. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. You're swearing off all of technological development for all the ages for something that's less than a hundred years old. I mean, um, I can see if you wanted to do like, um, elves are like the super nature people, then you'd be like, all elves are anti-technology and have been forever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, you could do something like that if you wanted to. Uh, they live in the forest, so those are anti-technology. But like, the idea that all of a sudden, nope, there's an entire city-state that's we, everything that has made everything and made uh, definitely small factions, uh, almost like cults. Sure. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, city-state. Okay. Um. I have no idea how to spell that word, but that's okay. I'm probably because it's not a real word. What game, What word? Corporatocracy. That's a real word. Are you, you sure? I'm looking at the wiki page for it right now. Fair, but is it in Merriam-Webster? Uh, I don't know. Is let's, it an accepted word? Let's find out. So moving on. Uh, so this big company A, the evil company. I'm actually going to call it company E. Company. It's in the Oxford dictionaries, at the very least. Oh, there you go. If it's if it's accepted into a uh, well-respected dictionary, I can say nothing. Was. Oh, I know why. It's because we're in this newer format. That's garbage. We change this. Um, style Newer form. advanced. Um, it's um. Uh, ignore me. Okay. On it. Textile. Being ignored. Instead of instead of CK editor, let's go textile editor. Let's see what happens when I do this. Uh, updated. Uh, functions. <clears throat> companies. There we are. That makes more sense to me. Uh, just dealing with things from. Um... Okay. Weird. Um, uh, Obsidian Portal. Gotcha. It's weird. It, the way that it changed to being. That's funny. So, Corporatocracy, City State. Again, weird. Let's see how this pops out now when I check it out. Still not working. What am I doing? What am I doing wrong? Why am I stupid? Oh, that's why. Okay. Again, don't mind me. Just remembering how to work a program. No problem. Everybody has their own markup. Yeah. There we are. Company Evil. All right, so let's talk about Company E. Um, give me the details. Give me what, how you feel about that. Do they own, um, are they the ones that own the, the richest, the, the, the best mine out of all of them? Do they own like a whole bunch of other ones? What's their plans? What is, talk to me about corporate, the big evil bad company. I mean, evil's in the eye of the beholder, right? Uh, no, no, this is, like I said, this is the objectively evil company. The rest of them are going to be all gray and it's beholder bullshit. <laughs> objectively evil. Like, they're uh, the ones that have slaves, effectively. Like, why, they're, they're corporate then, then they're, city, state garbage. They're why slavery. don't you consider themselves the ones that ended up buying out the dwarves, then? Buying out their Shh. mines. 
Sure. Um, not all of them, but bought out most of the dwarven mines. Okay. Yeah. Right. 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 Um, So they bought up most of the Dwarven Mines. Uh, I'm going to say that they were originally three different companies that came together to make this one set company. So the actual company is going to have uh, more or less like their board of directors is going to be three people. Okay. Um, they were all the like the owners or whatever of the pre-existing companies prior to the merger X number of years ago. Um, and um, so there's like almost like uh, Eberron House uh, Kenneth. Where there's like three vying heads, yeah, um, always trying to be a lead. So, uh, Bane speaker says the maybe they focus on quantity over quality. They don't have the biggest, uh, most efficient mines, but they have so many mines because they're willing to just throw people at them, even at the hint of any ore. Yep, absolutely, sure. So, quantity over quality. Uh, um, uh, let's see, we're three different. Keep talking at me. Um, I mean, like what, what their, I mean, like what their purpose is, is just, I'm assuming just riches and power, you know, like your typical company that is greedy, want more and more and more. Um, their product is like pretty middle ground, probably not the best around, but one of the cheapest and most easily accessible, a brand name you recognize like a Kraft macaroni and cheese. Oh god, yeah. You know what go. I mean? <laughs> like craft, like 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 craft is fucking disgusting. But who cares? They own the Patriots. And, yeah, they're just say they're everywhere. You know what I mean? like, yeah. Hey. They're everywhere. So, hey. Uh, um, uh, or like a, a Coca Cola. You know what I mean? Like Coca Cola is the like craft. Is craft really everywhere? Like I, I imagine in many countries, if you're like, hey, eat this craft cheese, they'd be like, no. <laughs> Whereas you can crack open a can of Coke in, I think, every country on the planet. You know what I mean? So, uh, um, Take real-life examples for how evil the in the Industrial Revolution could have been. Union scabs, straight-up firing your employees when they want to be paid. The shirt waste, uh, coat factory fire, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yep, 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 yep. All those, all, all those uh, wonderful things are going to be what kind of makes what they are. Um, makes the... the, the because they're going to be literally all the worst examples of everything that you can do. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. So um, they, because like I said, it was three different companies that merged together to make this happen. I imagine in doing that, they become their own uh, supply across the board. So like, for instance, when I was working for the 99 for a short period of time with the, the 99 did, is they actually bought out a small, uh, before, when it was still family owned mm -hmm. before it got bought up by a corporation that went to their own way when the 99 was still owned by uh, the Doe family, they actually bought out a small shipping industry and they handled so much of their own manufacturing of their own goods, the shipping of their own goods, because then it just brought profit down to the bottom line so much easier because you weren't paying somebody for shipping. You weren't paying somebody for, sure, it seems that way in the P&L of the individual restaurants, but the overall corporation was making significantly more money. Right. Yeah. I imagine that's what you're going to be doing with this company is that they're going to own their own shipping. They're going to own their own mining facilities. They're going to own their own. So um, that's why you still have the three boards of directors kind of running each of the different divisions of this one larger company. So what is our streamline? Uh, it's mining of ore, production of ore and sales of ore. Is that kind of like the three different fa groups that this company turns into? Production, sale and what? Uh, so it's a. Uh, Production Fine, of war. production, sale. Yeah. Right? Okay. I like what the chat says, the way they keep their costs low. They have an undead labor force. Huh. Um, while that sounds wonderful, I imagine nobody knows that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess it depends on how necromancy is looked at, but uh, that makes sense. I imagine very poorly it would be in almost every universe, right? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like if magic has only existed for the past hundred years and what it's best known for, it, it, you're always best known for the worst of the best things. What it's best known for is your brother died mining, but he's still doing it. Yeah, you know right, I mean? right, yeah. Like, how would you feel about that? Well, yeah. on one hand, dude, that's my brother's corpse. How could you do that to him? On the other hand, you still receive a paycheck. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like it true. sucks that your husband's dead and they're defiling his body. But you still receive a wage at the end of the week, and it really helps with the raising of family as being an only, you know, parent or whatever, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, I imagine it's a smaller paycheck, despite the fact, like, and that, that actually, that's a really cool. 
Ooh. <laughs> imagine, imagine that, Mathis. You have a spouse that's a minor. Your spouse makes three gold a week. Your spouse dies because of whatever. They can they ask your permission because or, or he signed a waiver or whatever it is. Now he becomes an undead person, and so they pay him. We'll say a third the amount. They now still send home one gold piece at the end of the week or whatever it is for their for their wages. However, they are literally working three to four times as much. Yeah, right. Than they were just, before. They're just courses. so they're paying a third. So it's a factor of twelve, right? Yeah. Or sorry, I say it's twelve times better. For the company? Yeah, no, they, they make a ton. They make a ton more off the back of that. I mean, it's a, almost incentivized as killing your staff. Yeah, I mean, and I'm sure there's happy accidents that happen all the time, kind of right? Thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh god, I, oh, almost. Or they, or they like, or they probably, you know, depending on where they're operating. If they're operating, it's maybe like they're they want to move into like a small town. They haven't been. There's like no company there yet, and they end up bribing or paying the mayor for access to the graveyards at night kind of thing yeah to dig up some corpses without telling anybody hey oh we got a uh uh faint speaker with a hey, $10 speaker. sub thank you very much thanks brother and also thanks for celia bowen for the 499 sub appreciate it oh, i'm so sorry did you even see that i'm barely looking over there thank you so much child labor i would say no uh going going against the idea i imagine that is universally something that's not going to be allowed however in the corporate uh corporatocracy they are not an evil city state they would never, ever go against child labor laws. It's just you can legally work at eight. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, or, or six, you know? All right, mining, production, and sales. Oh, I love the idea that... Um, now, remember, we're still... We're not, we're not going to, you know, employ every single modern... Uh, idea of what a company is and does. We're still industrial revolution plus fantasy. You want to keep it a little bit more basic. Oh, we're literally talking about the one company right. that is the worst of the worst. Right. Other companies aren't good. Like there are good people that run companies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, even if it's seed doesn't seem that way, there are good people that run companies. Yep. Um. Uh, keep talking. I'm. I can even see this evil corporation, like, underhandedly fueling, in some way, the slag trade. Get people hooked on on it early, cheap. They will never admit to it, and they, they probably have it so many different backroom deals that on paper they, they never... They officially don't, you know, back the slag trade. But they do in their own underhanded way to get people a taste of the magic. So they can Makes sell you wonder, their stuff. is magic to a some degree uh, addictive? I'm sure to a degree it's at least addictive, like, mentally, like, all in your head, just because you now have access to this power in some way and you want more of it. Like, the idea of marijuana. Marijuana has no physically addictive qualities right, exactly. that I'm aware of. However, people do enjoy being in an altered state of mind, and so they're addicted to the altered state of minds, not the actual qualities of it. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, um... I mean, I, I imagine that you feel powerful because you have this. Especially whatever. if you're like, you know, 25 years old, never experienced magic in your life. And now you get your first hit, of, like your first bit of slag or whatever it is, you know. Again, details worked out later and you get a taste of what the arcane is like. Yeah. Addictive or maybe insanity inducing. I always uh... like the idea of magic causing insanity, but not in a game. Like, for novels and, like, storytelling, I love the idea sure. of magic being something that can cause insanity. But when you're playing D&D, that introduces risks and in, 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 a lot of work that you might not want to do. It's one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of Call of Cthulhu as a concept that I like for long-form games and, like, in shorter form games. Because the idea that every session there's many chances you can go crazy. Yeah. It's like, ah, to, to me, it's like, again, if you have, like, one really good story that you want to tell awesome tell that story but i can't call cthulhu week by week by week by week by week for my life I, it's just always going crazy it just isn't fun yeah. for me you know? keep in mind so, uh um, chat the way at least i'm seeing it is like slag doesn't just give you access to like spells like uh, a sl like whatever you end up buying is infused with a type of magic that would give you access to like a spell once or twice lifetime oh, please, total please i want everybody to understand 
Uh, in no fucking way uh, is this going to work out. Like, I, I do not see the system running in Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah. That being said, when you have magic, you do not have spells. Right. You do not have, I have the slab of slag and <gasps> smells like magic missile. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that, that, yeah. no, you have access to magical energy, very GURPS format, where it's like, I have the ability to create fire. What can you do with that fire? Good question. And and that's how it works. It doesn't have to be GURPS, but much more loose. And so whatever system we end up playing in this world will be a little bit looser than, uh, you know, again, one bit of slag. It's like, oh, I got the mage driver one. I'm getting to a bar fight. You know, right, like, right. so. It would fit better in like a D10 or a D6 type of system. Oh, you could have a D20 system that isn't preset spells. Yeah. You know? Um, what is, uh, I missed what happened in chat here. Uh, one is immortal, one is a construct, and one, and the one mortal one scares the other two. I don't know what they're talking about. I feel like I missed out. Oh, they're talking about the three heads of the company. Oh, one okay. is actually immortal for one reason or another. One of them is actually a construct, and the other one is I didn't hear what the other part was. It says uh, one is immortal, one is a construct, and one. In the mortal, and then in the just the mortal one, like a, there's an immortal, a construct, and oh, and the mortal one. just scares the shit out of the other two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those because of raw magical power, sort of a thing. Um, <clears throat> is it racist that I think that uh, the evil company is run by humans? Is that is that a bad thing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Is that is that a little too misanthrope? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh. All right. Um, yeah, there you go. Faint speaker. Wolverine, except the uh, uh, adamantine is the ore. Um, all right. Let's see. Person, signed waiver. Okay. Continue on. So we get the idea of company E and what they're going to work like, right? So let's talk about a different company because um, that's what you said you wanted to work on for a format, right? Yeah. Just, companies just, first. just companies first and then we'd be like, okay, well, that's what? How many companies? All right. Cool. Okay, so that's what company E is like. Let's go back to company A. Uh, what's this company's focus? Is this going to be another mining company? Probably, right? We should probably focus on those first. Yeah. So uh, company A is going to be a mining company. Their focus is mining. Uh, tell me about this company, Mathis. Uh, I mean, I don't know what these companies do other than mine and produce metal, to be honest with you. <laughs> Story, buddy. Give me your uh, English and history degree. Right, but if the market is, if we're creating companies where the market is just competing against one another for magical metals, aren't they all going to just kind of do the same thing? Not entirely true. A company could literally be I manufacture weapons. I manufacture uh, Warforged themselves. Well, we don't want to hit every single company that exists in this in this world. The main ones, the big ones, the driving ones. Is that what we're talking about, making factions? Yeah, I just don't want to, I don't want it to, to become limiting. It never has to, no, of course it's not limiting. But are you, are you saying you're good with not going with companies right now? No, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to like piece it together in my mind. Like if we put out companies that do more than just the mining and stuff and we now have a, a main company for armor smithing and one for weapon smithing. I don't want that to be super pervasive in the world to the point where it is limited. Completely get what you're saying. You totally uh, fixed something I was thinking about. Most of the companies are, they're just mining companies. They're the companies that own the ore. And so therefore they're known for that. That one super company or whatever it is, is the one that has like they streamline from ground to pocket. Right. Gotcha. I know what you're saying. Okay, cool. So let's move on to another part. Let's start with the arcane universities. Sure. Um, so... With the arcane universities, I imagine um, there are a few different ones, um, but what do they focus on? What is like their their thing? Um, I guess it would depend on the university. Yeah, that's weird. I'm uh, clicking on this. It's gonna drop down, and it has like it's a good thing I'm not the one hosting the stream. It has my address posted right there as an autofill. Yeah, no, you don't want that. No, yeah. no. Like my 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 address is right there. My wife's address. Sorry, my wife's like work address, all that stuff. It's like, oh, that's not good. Yeah, no. But I saw this one. I'm not hosting. Yeah. Um. 
So Arcane Universities, what are they? Obviously, they're the ones that are um, creating uh, magic and means of, uh, of magic. But what's their focus? Is it to educate? I assume most are there to educate. Um, educate and discover? I was to say educate, experiment, research. Especially since magic is still relatively new, you know, in, in modern history of the, of the world. So a lot of research, I'm sure. Okay. Um... You know, I'm sure there's, you know, major universities in all the major cities and maybe some smaller schools in some smaller towns, but they're not everywhere. They're still rare. Well, because of the fact that we do, we're talking about companies here in a very capitalist way, you imagine that there are a few schools that are the big ones. And there are a couple of small schools where it's like, oh, I got formally trained. That's nice. Yeah. Um, let's talk about... I would actually say maybe even universities, the only magical universities that exist are in the major, major cities. Oh, of course. And then you have, like, uh, the marketing ones that go out oh, to yeah, convince yeah. people to go back and join. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, let's see. Faiths. So, as always, you have to have, in my opinion, as always, you have to have the one true God faith. You know what I mean? That's one of the greatest things about Faerun, not Faerun, Game of Thrones or um, uh, Song of Ice and Fire is there is a religion that is the one true god religion. All other gods are false. Um, that's one of the things that happens in Eberron that makes it amazing. You have the, the Silver Flame. Yeah. Um, kind of funny. Both those gods happen to be fire gods. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's just funny. Um, but, you know, Song of Ice and Fire existed before Eberron did. Yeah. Um, you, like you have to have the one true God faith. So let's talk about that one. One true God faith. Did this faith exist prior to the uh, the discovery of? Yeah, I imagine there's a big chunk of faith that existed for thousands of years. I I almost like seeing it as if it happened in real life. Like Western culture, predominantly Christian. If you're not Christian, the fuck's the matter with you? I guess like you can be Jewish too. I guess because it's effectively the same religion, but. What's the matter with you? Not my views. Again, industrial era, Western society, not my views. I'm an atheist. Um, uh, but then with the creation of magic, all of a sudden, the idea of all these other gods come out, that this religion is now fighting against the other ones, not literally sword and shield fighting, but, you know, societally fighting, like, no, this is the real god. Why are you straying from the path? You must, say, you know, find salvation. Um like the idea yeah i'm down with that been around for thousands of years you know the 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 perceived goodly god whatever it could be of like your typical sun fire your your usual cliched symbols mm. of what a goodly god is and i All imagine right. as magic came back people started worshiping maybe old forgotten gods that people have just rediscovered or new ones people have made up i mean that's that's up in the air. Uh, yeah, almost like, um, like I said, in real life, if the discovery of magic were to happen, you'd have so many people feeling legitimized. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so if you were, you know, uh, happen to be a pagan, um, you know, worshiper that actually believes in magic or, or, um, or Satanism, real Satanism, not the, you know, uh, once again, if you believed in things like this actually exist to, to one degree or another, you would feel legitimized. Like, mm -hmm. hey, look, here's proof that these kind of things can happen. Right. So, um, so we're just going to go with many other uh, faiths. I imagine none of them are quite as big as that. I like the idea of another like faith that's been around for a long time, uh, slightly altering to incorporate this and be like, no, 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 this is proof that this god is, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... Almost like, again, just trying to draw from real-world things. If you had, like, Christianity, someone that's fighting back. Like, no, this is this is demon worship. This isn't something that you can do. But then you had, like, Buddhism was like, nope, we're actually blending this right in. And we're going <laughs> to ride this gravy boat home and really spread <laughs> our faith. It's like, ah, wow, the, the Buddhists are, are really opportunistic. Good for them. <laughs> so, um... um
It's always good to pull on a uh, real life. Yeah, yeah, of course. Obviously, you know, I'm not saying actual Buddhists are actual, like, you know. Right, yeah, of course. No, that's too late, Scott. You said it. It's in the internet now. It's totally my belief. It's oh, in man. the internet. Oh, man. Um, Sarcasm. Do I just, like, use my green screens and put, like, Kappa in the background? I mean, maybe. It might be the best there. way to go sometimes with some of the people yeah. that watch stuff. I'm just always there flashing right. around. I'm going to let you keep talking to the internet. I'm going to go and go to the bathroom real quick. Somebody's got a bladder problem. Yeah, it's called getting old. Check your prostate. I'm going to, you know, stick a finger up there. Or have a trained professional do no, it. No, I'm just going <laughs> to stick my own finger up there and feel. I mean, that's, you, I mean, <laughs> or have your significant other do it, you know? Um, uh, any, any takers? Anybody in chat? <laughs> So, uh, one other, just what did the, okay. I honestly haven't really been reading chat. So let's bring it over to an area where I can actually see what you guys are saying. Um, change over what I'm looking at over here to how I had it last night. Don't know why I didn't do that today. Oh, there we go. More talking to myself at the moment. Um, volunteers tribute. You go right ahead, garbled mine. All yours. All yours. Uh, don't wash your hands first. That'll make it better. So, um, what were we talking about? Um, yeah, so <laughs> XCOM. Thanks, Death. <laughs> uh, religious cult or church that evolved into a company. So, yeah, I like the idea of uh, there being a religious cult. So before somebody was talking about, I don't remember who it was, but somebody was talking about the idea of people being like uh, anti, anti, anti technology. Magic is the only way. Da, 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 da. That is definitely going to be a religious cult that we have. Um, I'm actually, you know, um, so anti tech cult. Uh, I imagine that they'll be working on some sort of, um, so they'll have some sort of God that tells them that that's what they're supposed to be. Uh, the idea of there being anti-magic peoples. Um, so I, I definitely see that happening. Um, again, that happens in real worlds where people uh, use um, their religion to stop uh, technological developments happening, whether they be medical or otherwise in real life. I imagine things like that would happen there too because of, whatever um, uh, ethical beliefs that they have from their religion impacting what they feel as though magic or technology can do. Um, uh, you know, obviously one or the other, you can't be like, I'm against both. Um, unless you're like some tribe off in the middle of nowhere. Um, so we'll go anti-magic group. So I imagine the anti-magic group, uh, unlike the anti-tech cult, the anti-magic group might have like a cult as like a part of it. But there's also going to be like a big um, uh, group around the um, like this is going to be kind of a movement, like an anti-magic movement. So it's not like a little cult. It's actually going to be like a, a much, much bigger thing. Um, I did not look at the microscope system, uh, Gmano, because um, I know you had sent it to me earlier, but you sent it to me while I was on stream and then I was with my daughter. And then I was having dinner with my wife and daughter, and then I was live. So I didn't have chance yet, but I'm definitely going to look into it when I have time, probably when I'm lying in bed. Uh, anti magic would be cool for uh, machines to have. Uh, you need to have extremists. You definitely need to have extremists in there. Um, uh, what about that one cult that has some seriously fucked views, uh, but uh, for some reason they have a massive following? I mean, there's, that's, you know, that. That is, uh, again, exactly what I'm talking about. Like the the anti-magic group that's going to be the much bigger one. They have some pretty messed up views about what magic is. I imagine uh, they're going to be literally, they use that religion that I mentioned beforehand as their base. They're like, no, 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 magic is the devil. It's literally like demons taking over. If you use magic, it's because the devil's in you. Don't worry, we can save you by bleeding you out from cutting certain parts of your tongue and whipping you and stuff. And people are like, yes! That's what we need to do. If somebody casts a spell, we cut them and whip them. <laughs> and, and that'll definitely be a thing that you encounter. You know what I mean? It's one of those things where uh, it, it'll be so bad that if you see somebody wearing the symbol of that faith, you have to think twice to yourself, is this person 
going to be uh, like, oh, I don't, you know, I, I worship this god, but I don't care about magic. Or is this person going to be like, no, I'm anti-magic. Um, as I imagine, you know, again, uh, some people's do when you think about real life examples, you know what I mean? Uh, some people's from one group versus another group. Are they the extreme or are they the normal? Um, is he magic sentiments because it's more new? Um, I, that's exactly what I was saying. Garbled minds, um, uh, mages who do not need slag or other materials to do magic are a rarity. Um, so mages, um, uh, will always need, uh, magic will always need some amount of this magical uh, metal because uh, they just usually need tomes. It's the ink. You, know, you need special inks in D&D &D to write like your spell book. Well, that ink is going to be very heavy with those metals. So they'll always need that there. However, sorcerers, if that's what you're referring to, will be ones that's kind of like infused in their body. They don't need that kind of stuff. It's magic. Just think of that worshiping uh, psychoactive dirt uh, is a waste of time. Um, let's see. Magic terrorists feel less... Uh, I know we're talking about religions, but it's interesting. Uh, it would be if there was a company that was run by devils or devil worshippers who love making deals to fuck people over like your everyday businessman. That's kind of funny. Um, I don't know how much I want uh, demons and devils and whatnot to be immediately in the world. With it being so new, I imagine not even everybody believes that um, that uh, that kind of stuff exists yet. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I, I'm curious as to, like, obviously demons and devils exist. Angels exist. That stuff exists. But it's so rare, so little known, that the average person's, like, to them, it's folklore. It's, it's not something that, that's definitive. Uh, G. Mano, kind of funny. You mentioned the Cult of the Dragon from Faerun. Uh, there's also the Cult of the Dragon below in, in Eberron. So I, I always thought that was um, kind of funny. Um... Uh, field paint. He was talking about inserting a digit into his anus before he left, so it is very possible that he's doing that. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, we need magical terrorists. Yeah, we're already talking about that. Um, totally his favorite pastime. I feel like an unfair lump. Um, I, I feel like it's an un unfair to lump all Christians into magic haters. I wouldn't. Uh, well, I mean, one, we're not saying Christians. We're saying this religion that I only use Christianity as its base because in our real life planet, that's the primary faith that exists here, but it doesn't have to be all Christians. And certainly not all of them are going to be magic haters. I imagine there would be a small group of them that are super extreme and ultra haters. Then there'll be a slightly outwards group that are like, we don't like them, but it's not like we're going to attack them or even say anything mean to them. I just don't like them. There'll be a group around that that's like, oh, I don't dislike them. I just, you know, get uneasy and kind of like make my decisions based off of the individual ones here or there. And then there's the one, the group that exists outside of that. that they're like, no, oh, they're just people. They use magic. Who cares? You know what I mean? So everything comes in like spheres that grow outwards. Super inner crazy group, slightly less crazy, less crazy, not even crazy at all. Everyone else. You know what I mean? Moving on. Um, so is slag uh, kind of like uh, Lyrium and Dragon Age? Uh, it's been so long since I played Dragon Age. I think wasn't Lyrium actually a magically conduing metal? Maybe so maybe that's where the idea came from. I you know the subconscious, right? Uh, do we ever create anything, or do we only build off of past experiences? You know, um, maybe. Uh, I played Dragon Age in like 2006 or something, like when it first came out. Um, maybe 2008. I don't know, whatever that was. Uh, the Cold Iron Line um, start from a small time church with fear of magic, pulled funds, specialized investment, allowed uh, the congregation to form specialized weapons. Company, da, da, da. Cold of the Dragon's favorite worships Drake Alicious. So, Cold of the Dragon below actually worships a um, a woman by the name of. Val, who is a half uh, elf, half green dragon lich. So similar. Um, Christians aren't magicators. Many of them transformed, uh, bred to flesh on a regular basis. <laughs> um, uh, maybe supernatural beings running things in the shadows of centuries only to have recently been exposed somewhat due to the popularization of magic within the public. Uh, definitely will be the idea that this stuff has always been around. Uh, but has only recently been rediscovered. And so therefore, uh, things like that, totally an option. Immortals that have been locked in this realm. Imagine like, imagine there being like some sort of ancient being or being that 
is immortal to age maybe one of the people that runs the company that was originally not necessarily like they had these whatever views but then they've been stuck here for thousands of years on the material plane like fuck me i don't want to be here i'm gonna go home this is awful and they can't get back um and to paint a picture of what they probably think is awful i like to think of idiocracy and how like that soldier went back to the future and sorry went into like the, the time pod thing went to the future or whatever and he was like this place sucks is there a time machine for me to go back and then he goes and he finds the time machine he's like nope i'm stuck here fuck me and that's kind of like the experience that person had and so instead of just like twiddling their thumbs for all eternity they decided to become a mover or shaker again potentially the immortal of the three heads of that super evil organization to eventually allow the magics to be here so they could get back but now that the magics are here and they've been here for so long they have so much investment here sure they could go back or they can use the things from before to continue altering this world and give themselves more power hello Hi. Uh, you could do it where the races were all humans who turned to other races when magic was introduced. That's literally Shadowrun, actually. Yeah, we're we're not we're not doing yeah. that. No, that's um, that's just exactly what happened in Shadowrun. Yeah, we're not we're not just all of a sudden all these other races. I like the idea that uh, that's how we do some races. You know what I mean? Like, oh, give me an injection of that, and now I'm blah. But not all the races. Right. Right. Uh, would there be a magic policing force that would try to limit people who use magic to a point that is dangerous to the public? Like in Dragon Age, they had Templars who watched the mages if they crossed the line. Um, I can imagine that there's types of those types of people in certain cities or in certain kingdoms, um, but not necessarily a worldwide police force like the Templars. Because then that then, would just make it using magic too much of a hassle or too much of a... A dangerous thing and in a, in a in a campaign setting like dark sun where you have at least the option of psionics that makes sense but you know it doesn't really exist for the record i have zero intention of psionics in this and i yeah. mean like a hard zero intention of psionics in this whatsoever right. i also want to be very clear i i see there being no division between arcane and divine in nature magics no division between them whatsoever magic is magic when magic came back divine power came back and arcane power came back from those concepts that you're probably already familiar with um the fact that you use it in the name of of jeebus versus um uh your arcane congress don't care uh magic is magic um slap labels on it if you'd like yeah so, um did you wash your hands mike always good just making sure um what am i a neanderthal you, you don't know if neanderthal is a good you know that's true i don't know i mean why are you judging man it's true i can't what, judge those who don't you, exist any speciest? longer you know right what i mean jesus lyrium and dragon age is a type of metal ore looking thing that's toxic to humans and elves but dwarves are naturally resistant to it for spoiler reasons and its refined liquid form gives mages their powers that's right. Again, I haven't played Dragon Age in fucking ages. Okay. Yeah, me either. I played Origins when it came out, loved it. Played Dragon Age two, hated it, and then never. And I like, I think I played the new one for like an hour, and I was like, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Speak a blah. <laughs> but did he wipe? Oh, that is that is a question I will not answer. Well, I, I will gladly ask that question. He has a bidet because he likes that tickle. That's true. There you go. <laughs> Squirt me in the butthole, please. Thank you. I won't lie. The first time I ever saw a bidet was when I was in Paris, and I was like, "Whoa, this is a thing." For all my it's traveling, like, I've actually like, never, like, never used a bidet before. Well, used and saw are two very different things. That's true. That's true. So, I hear once you use one, though, you don't ever want to go back. Again, I'm not here to judge. I don't give a shit what you do. Ah, I'm just, so. I'm just, I'm just saying it's what I've heard, man. I don't know. Um, I can't tell you. But moving on, so uh, moving <laughs> on from the shitty conversation. Uh, ha ha, 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 ha. Uh, Sorry. You better be. Um. All right. Where is it? Where, where are we just going? I don't know. Religions is where I was. Where we were before I left. Oh, we were talking about religion pretty much the entire time. Somebody was concerned that I was lumping Christians in with all magicators, and I was like, "What? No, that's not at all what I'm saying." And then we talked about like circles of 
of that, whatever. Gotcha. Am I going to regret putting this up on YouTube? Is my question. No. All right. That's all I care. <laughs> I'm like, why would you? Um, can we have a church of thonk? Yes. Yes, we can. <laughs> we, will certainly, we actually can have yeah, a church of thonk. It's called Twitch chat. Funny. <laughs> funny. It would be funny if our community, was, instead of the Lost the Ship, was actually called the Church of Thunk. There you go. That, that, it would be funny if the All Lost Ship community was called the Church of Thunk. Um, I, you know? Uh, For a, 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 a tithe of $5 a month, you too can join the Church of Thunk. <laughs> well, that's only the that's only the, the lowest rung. Right, of the, course. On the, yeah, on the ladder. Thunk runs thunk. a pyramid scheme. I, I, well, it's not a pyramid scheme, man. Are you, are you telling me that Scientology is a pyramid scheme? Uh, no, of course not. Why would I, absolutely. Why would, you shit on, why would you shit on a religion like that? You just have to pay exorbitant amounts of money to be um, seen as holy enough to get right. to the next, to, to, to be enlightened. Right. Yes, enlightenment costs in more ways than one. Um, all right. So have you considered the existence of wild magic? Uh, I imagine all magic is wild. Um, in this world, as much as I hate wild magic in a D&D concept, I imagine all my magic is wild, and it's the control that um, that allows people to do otherwise. You know what I mean? Mm. So uh, my point of this is um, we're not casting spells like in D&D. Um, whatever system we choose to run in, I like the idea of GURPS. It doesn't have to be. Um, uh, magic is going to run on like a, a scale. So if your magic is weaker... If you have lower quality of magic, you could roll poorly and bad things happen when you don't expect them to. Um, that's the campaign's book. Give me two seconds. Okay. The book right there. Is he going to get GURPS? What is the money that he's going to get GURPS book right now? It's the third edition one because it's the one that's right Told next you. to me. Told but... you. Told you. What'd you say? Nothing. What did he say? I didn't say anything. I just... I... Didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Mike, I haven't seen your face real life since PAX East. Yeah, uh, I had no car for a while. I know. Listen, we're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to lure you to my house with uh, with some uh, Hawaiian pizza and um, a and live a game really, of D D. <laughs> yeah, a live game of D D. <laughs> a really, really wimpy beer. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Can you give me some apple apple cider. Oh, there you go. There you go. We'll give you uh we'll give you like a, a super chick drink. Like, there you uh, go. Perfect. Yeah, like a hard cider. But like not even like a good hard cider, like a three point two percent alcohol hard cider. Well, I you got know. myself a car now. Did I tell you what I bought? Yes, but I don't remember. It's because I'm an old man. I just bought a twenty sixteen Corolla. There you go. Thing will I mean, hopefully last me forever. I still have well, no. <laughs> I still have I have a civic. So I yeah. went from my, my 97 Civic to my 2012 Civic. Exactly. I went from my 2000 Corolla to my 2016 Corolla. Do not pass Done. code. Do not collect $200, <laughs> right? Yeah, cheap and they efficient. say millennials don't have brand loyalty. Uh, spiked apple juice? Hell yeah, dude. Now you're talking my language. So by spiked apple juice, he, <laughs> means, he means a tall glass of apple juice that looked at a bottle of liquor. Right. Like sat next to it for a few minutes. No, you you got me really I drunk know. once with like I know. pineapple juice or some crap. Pineapple and cranberry takes away the flavor. Yeah, I couldn't taste anything but the juice. You're welcome. You hid my drink on me. AK, you put it on a shelf and I didn't realize it. And you told me you hid it and I couldn't find it. I was obnoxious back with drinking in the day. My favorite thing to do during like parties is if somebody was like left their beer sitting around. It's not anybody, but like good friends of mine. If they left their beer sitting around, I'd pour peach schnapps into it. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> and, and then, you know, you wouldn't waste the beer. So you'd be like, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be, you could be drinking like a shitty beer, like, I don't know, a Natty Ice light. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd be like, it tastes like peaches. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It would just, uh, the, the, the flavor would overtake it. Occasionally, it would be like a Guinness, and you'd be like, my Guinness tastes like peaches. <laughs> I have never, however, I am proud. I have never vomited from drinking. Uh, I have. Uh, I used to be able to say only twice ever. <laughs> I got old. I was going to say, once you get old, your tolerance just goes down. I forgot why magic was. It's bothering me. Um, yeah, I've never, I've never, I think that night 
I woke up the next morning with like a headache. I I, th I vaguely remember feeling not great, but I didn't puke. So good for you. Puking is like my biggest fear ever. I hate doing it. Oh yeah, I hear you. Like I'd rather like even when you know if you puked, you'd be fine. Like so much better, yep. so much quicker. You're like, but I'd rather I endure. Just, it. I just want to suffer. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Honestly, I'd rather suffer. So then you get a little bit older, and you're like. Just get it out. Or, <laughs> or, uh, or I can just feel I, better. I have responsibilities. <laughs> and I really should get to those. Here we go. I found spells. It took me ages. God, I I, it was like while. maybe six to eight months ago. I don't know what it was. It had to have been something I ate. And uh, I spent the entire night, like every 30 minutes, just getting up and just fucking dry heaving because there's just nothing left in my stomach. That, that was the worst. Like tears, like beet red face. Just awful. Okay. So, uh, examples of spells in GURPS. Fire spells. Ignite fire. Create fire. Shape fire. Extinguish fire. Heat. Um, then, because they continue with fire spells, also cold, resist fire, fireball. You know what I mean? So, what does ignite fire do? So, it's all based off of, like, your your how good you are in it. But it could be things like, um, uh, let's see. Oh, sorry, how much you uh, fatigue you pour into it, so how much effort you pour into it. The idea of, like, oh, it's enough to, like, light a candle, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, like, a, a piece of tinder or something like that. Oh, two points into it, it's enough to light, like, a torch or somebody's, like, uh, ordinary clothes. Um, for another point into it, it's, like, you could actually light, like, leather on fire or dry firewood. And then for another point into it, it's like you can actually do things uh, for an effect as though burning magnesium or phosphorus has been held, you know what I mean? So uh, we'll ignite coal and stuff like that, or right. heavy wood. Um, so the idea like, oh, it's just like you have an ability and then you just put more effort into it and it does more. But this is technically a skill. And so you have to roll on your skill chart. And so if you roll extremely poorly, that's actually covered in my magics book, which I won't go to. If you roll very poorly, instead of doing something like, oh, I ignite fire, it could be like, no, I actually open a gate into the realm of fire and fire creatures come out. Oops, that's an, <laughs> oh, it's a critical no. failure. It's not like every minute it happens. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Or it could be like, I'm really, really, really trying to start a fire, but instead, like, I screwed up the magic so much, instead of creating fire, I actually created, like, maggots on the person because, like, you just fucked up the magic so badly because um, everything's a skill check. Right. So magic is inherently wild, and it's your control that gives you the ability to make it not GURPS is D6 system, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 3d6. I was actually looking up the rules, just because we were talking about it yesterday, the rule system of Blades in the Dark. Blades in the Dark operates very similar to GURPS. I think you're going to mm -hmm. like it. It's a d6 system, and it's variations of just succeeding or failing, and what can happen when that happens. So somebody mentioned this in chat, that um, uh, Mouse Guard was more or less a dumbed-down version of Burning Wheel. And like, I remember them saying that in chat, and I was on Roll20 <coughs> earlier, just kind of like looking at the different sheets that they have there. And it's literally a subcategory of Burning Wheel. Oh, really? Card. And I was like, oh, okay. No, it's literally, it might even be the same creators. Uh, like, it's literally a dumbed-down version of Burning Wheel. So I thought that was cool. That is cool. So um, did you did, You said you already bought the book, right? Yeah, book's on the way. Cool, cool, cool. So we'll, like, look at the rules for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to, to go through it. Again, it, it seems to be a very uh, open-ended success, failure, and in-between system, like Fantasy Flight, D10, that kind of thing. It seems like a lot of games are going that direction now with uh, with tabletop, with the exception of obviously of D&D because D&D kind of has to adhere to D20 system. <laughs> they kind of just... They it kinda... doesn't have to. It's just they... Do they want to reinvent the wheel? Right. You know what I mean? They don't have to do anything, right? Yeah. So, um, I mean, well, you know what they have to do? They have to do what's going to generate more profits. Right. Yeah, they have to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um uh all right so anyways keep going um what are other things that we want to kind of because i like the idea of these basic faiths we talked about what's this other categories i have talk about factions talk about faiths talk about the planet con um, content whatnot's being created uh tech so let's talk about tech sure um let's talk about uh, we already know uh weapons in general what we have there so you have pretty much everything you have in a typical steampunk world swords bows crossbows, hammers, axes, pistols, uh, pistols, uh, muskets, um, cannons, stuff like that. But let's actually talk about the firearms themselves. Do you have an automatic rifle as an option? Or is that like a seriously powerful magic item? 
do you your pistols are they one shot or are they like six shooters like revolvers uh your your rifle is it a musket or is it bolt action um or is it is it self-loading you know what i mean like what's your idea uh i don't see like an automatic like rifle like a machine gun really uh, if those exist i would consider them powerful magical items quote unquote um, however, I don't see pistols being a one-shot thing. I do see pistols being more multiple shots before you need to reload. Um, I'm actually going through... I understand muskets aren't rifles, but muskets are the precursors to rifles. Correct. Muskets are your two-handed firearm that could shoot a ball uh, with better accuracy than the sh smaller version of themselves. You know what I mean? Like, I understand not the same, but against the precursor. So are we in the day and age where there are just still muskets, or do we have rifles? It says my internet connection's unstable again. Yeah, you're going I'm, in and out, robotic. I am really annoyed with Comcast. I'm gonna have to call them at like whenever we hang up with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Let, let's uh, let's finish out the basic uh, basics of of the world building before we wrap it. So so uh, talk to me about um, firearms. I'm, I'm actually going you're through like the... like a six-shooter, like a revolver, right? I like that idea, yeah. I'm actually trying to get down to um, Iron, Iron Kingdom. Kingdom. I'm, in, I'm in the book. I'm just looking for uh, gear. Weapons. Oh, if you play good combat movement, where's the shit? Where's shit? Gear. Ranged weapons, 260. 260. But you didn't work. I said two, six, zero. And I Firearm okay. reload times. It takes a quick action to load a charge, either paper or metal, into a breech loading firearm. Loading a muzzle loading firearm, or loading the separate elements of the shot, the two blasting powder packets and a bullet, into a uh, breech loader separately takes a full round rather than a quick action. What is a carbine? Primary military weapon, uh, bridge of the gap between a pistol and a rifle. Weapon utilizes five chambered ammo. Uh, wheel. Oh, I know what that is. I know what that is. Okay, that's cool. Uh, instead of reloading each chamber separately, relatively advanced weapon is rare to. That's cool. Hand cannon. Extremely yeah. heavy and well made pistols. Hand cannons are expensive firearms, most commonly found in the possession of ranking military officers. Okay, so not what I'm looking for. Pistol, this is what I'm looking for. Ammo, one. So it's a one. One shot load, one shot load, one shot load. But loading yeah. is a quick action. Yeah, exactly. It's just kind of like exactly, uh, which is, which is kind of funny. Like the idea that it's a quick action or effectively like a bonus action to load a pistol sounds a little goofy. But I understand it's because you're using like more or less self-contained bullets. Mm -hmm. So it's like I don't know. Do you want to do something like that, or do? You, or, well, there's a repeating pistol. Which has ammo five light rounds, so there yeah. you go. So you get both. This is five basically. chambers, so that that's going to be your your what do you call it? Cool. A mage lock pistol, the signature weapon of a gun mage. Mm -hmm. uh, it's handcrafted product of master gun, only rare. Difficult. So rifles are obviously one uh, shot, uh, mm -hmm. and then reload, making it more like um, like your uh, musket or your uh, flintlock kind of weapon, where you had to actually it looks like kind of like a flintlock weapon. Um, where you had to reload after each shot as opposed to being, um, well, it could be bolt action too. Technically that's one round, right? Yeah. Um, uh, mage lock. It's a rune shot. I shoot runes. Military rifle, one round. Scatter gun. Hmm. Don't mind me as I read. Yeah, sword so I'm doing the cannon. same thing. Do you see this repeating sword cannon? I think I did see sword cannon. Slug gun? Oh my god. There's also an axe gun. Uh, up up uh, earlier. Heavy sword cannon. So funny. Yep, yeah, Vance, they'll be on the YouTube channel. Right, cool. uh, where's the axe gun I saw? I want to see what that. Is. So there, there will be flintlock and there will be revolvers. Um, but what's the basic? What's like? Hey, there's a random NPC you're coming across, and he looks threatening as he moves his weight, his you know coat open. Do you see a flintlock or do you see a revolver? Uh, like what's most common is what you're saying. Yeah, I'd say flintlocks are probably more common. 
Gotcha. Um, so if you're but, a first level but, character walking in, do you have a flintlock? Yeah, I'd say you have a flintlock. Um, but like a, a five shooter or a repeating pistols, they're not hype hyper rare you know what i mean they're just expensive but you can get one pretty much in any city gotcha as cool. opposed to like a machine gun which i would say fucking doesn't exist unless you're you know magic item style yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like crazy magic that makes it so it you know da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i yeah, gotcha yeah. yeah cool so uh flitlock is the most common with revolver being immediately after that and you're gonna have that same idea with um with a gun yeah uh with a rifle yep um or or whatever and I understand that uh, Mathis and I are using relatively uh, loose terms when there are very, very specific definitions to to the different words that we're saying. But meh, you know what I mean? We're just talking about concepts, not about the exact weapons. Yeah, this and is like no means a weapons expert. This is like if we were gonna go full out world building. This is like step one of like thirty sessions of building yep. this place. Like this is like laying down concrete. You know, mm -hmm. for for that's all. So we're just trying to get concepts on paper. Uh, laying concrete we're uh, barely mixing the yeah we're like water. digging the hole where we're gonna put the concrete at some point yeah. um you know just the basic timeline basic idea that kind of thing don't really want to get too deep into the complexities of cities and stuff right now cool 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 all right yeah american so, west um, 1911 style where flint locks are more common but repeaters and stuff exist they're just a little expensive I mean, in 1911, weren't there revolvers? Yeah. Revolvers existed before 19... Revolvers existed in the 1800s. Similar. Like that. Around that like, era. Like, what Western movies take place in what year? Like, early 1800s, don't they? I like if you're thinking, like, you. you know, I don't want to see you coming back into my town, son. I don't even know. You know, like, revolvers, right? Let's find out when Tombstone took place. There you go. You looking it up? All right. I'll yeah. Let you do when it. did Tombstone take place? Which I only recently saw last year. Really? Yeah. It wasn't that good. There's a remake too. Uh, 1881. There you go. So you're talking 1800s. You know. Um. Uh. So I mean, revolvers definitely existed for a very, very long time. Because revolvers are super, super simplistic. Um. Uh. Um. My brain's not working. Uh, revolvers are super, super simplistic weapons, uh, and they're super hardy, which is why, like, you know, in a lot of games, I like the idea of using a revolver rather than a, because, like, a revolver won't um, jam on you, like survival games. Revolvers don't jam on you as often. They don't malfunction as often. Yeah. Revolver falls in water. You're not worried about it being all fucked up. You know what I mean? A revolver right. is just going to work. Yep. So, um, moving on. All right, cool. So that's where we are with weapons, being that idea. So I'm actually going to um, uh, put that in here really quickly. So for weapons, we're going um, uh, flintlock is common. Uh, revolvers uh, exist. Etc. Cool. Oh, cannons exist, right? Mm-hmm. And there's the hand cannon existed before flintlock did didn't it yeah probably that would make sense are there cars though uh -uh. let's let's not worry about uh mortal vehicles yet let's talk about armor how do we handle armor in this world man are we talking like full-on D, D style like yeah, yeah fuck around with breastplate on that piece of steel could totally stop uh because it's just a lead ball yeah right? I, I would imagine armor is still very fantastical though probably stylized to go along with the steampunk setting it's not people in like full suits of armor that look like freaking knights with swords and shields but no but i mean even you like... retrofit or, or not retrofit but you customize the armor to look more commonplace even in your like you know what late 1700s uh you had people that wore a slab of fancy breastplate right exactly on a battlefield because there were muskets and it would stop <laughs> the musket you know i mean yeah revolvers aren't as weren't as is that the revolvers weren't good in the 1800s? Is that the ammunition wasn't good in the 1800s? So I imagine your armor could stop that kind of stuff. You know right. what I mean? Yep. So that leads me to my next question. The other reason why I was going to talk about armor, Mathis, prepare yourself for this one. Okay. Um, armor exists, sure, but what about targeting? What do you mean, like sights? I mean, like body parts. Oh, you want to get. You want to get into that kind of rule system right now? 
I'm asking, is that something that you would, uh, that you care about? I mean, if you're going to be, I, I imagine it's something we were going to want to care about. Uh, I mean, for like, uh, obviously a lot of that's going to be based off of whatever system we choose using. Right. Yeah. But like, do you think that things like, um, breastplate just protects the character in this kind of a world or oh, eh, fuck it, just yeah. rule, rule system will decide it. Um, I feel like the rule system will decide it. Honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, with it. Yeah, I, I feel like that's something we don't necessarily really need to dive into. Um, yeah, that that could be an unnecessary like depth that we don't need to really worry about. I'm sure. I'm all for letting whatever rule system we choose dictate a lot of the nitty gritty, so we don't have to. Sure, sounds great. Uh, all right, moving on. Um, where am I? What's something else then? Um, so we have weapons, we have armor, um, grenades and stuff like that obviously exist. It's all basic. Um, uh, what is, um, so other type of, think cyber, uh, steampunk. What are other bits of tech and gizmos and whatnot you want? Do you want to have like your big gadgety kind of watch thing that can uh, detect like almost like a, um, what the hell's that thing called? It detects uh, like a guy, like a Geiger meter. Oh yeah. yeah. Detect like uh, you know high concentrations of magical metals and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm so sure those kinds have, of things like, exist. Or like goggles. The gnomish goggles. Like, oh yeah, of course. You, you know, definitely and, want all that stuff in like a in a steampunk world. So you, you want know? to have all that fun techie stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely want to have that kind of fun like far sight goggles. Um, use it to pierce the most uh, obscuring magic. Scope includes a housing. Yeah, like uh, I'm just looking at like miscellaneous gear in, in Iron Iron Kingdoms, like uh, Arcantric scopes and Farsight goggles, prost uh, mechanical prosthetic limbs. Yeah. Then you got storm glaives and yeah, yeah. You definitely want all those fun ga gadgets kind of wandering around. Yeah, cool. And most of them are going to be enhanced by technology as opposed to enhanced by magic. Right. Right. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Um, all right. So, Steampunk uh, exosuit. Yeah, I'm sure. Say that. I'm sure those exist, and I'm sure they're expensive and experimental at best. <laughs> it's funny because I actually almost like because you look at the cover of Iron Kingdoms, Google Iron Kingdoms. Yeah, you got the about. the mech on the front. I I always kind of like the idea of that instead of having that be a race, have that be a class. You know what I mean? Like my class is mech suit man. You know what I mean? <laughs> like like Iron Man in Iron Man One trying to bust out of the. Uh, the, the terrorist organizations yeah you know like i like the idea of that like this is my concept but like the idea of having a character concept completely based off of an item makes things a little difficult so yeah um get a suit entirely made out of that magical metal oh jesus christ <laughs> you will you need at least some of that magical metal in there so it actually powers up and functions right mm -hmm. otherwise you get like huge car batteries attached to it um um would machines that harness magic be rare or commonplace if by machines that harness magic you mean things like magic wands i imagine more rare uh one of the things i like about doing in this world that we're talking about here is it's still lower magic it's not high magic high fantasy it's high technology and technology will fill in the uh the slot of like the various magic items you'd find in typical campaigns like mathos was just talking about with the goggles that can do various things and right. whatnot but there will also be magic items that can do similar things uh, that are far more rare. So instead of, oh, you've got these like big heavy pair of goggles that weighs four pounds, but allows you to see like uh, a mile away comfortably, you've got this like slick pair of spectacles that you can put on and does the same exact thing for you and weighs a handful of ounces. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, brought to you by Oakley. Um, so uh, I like the idea of that kind of uh, stuff happening. Uh, artifact which absorbs magic from the air and shoots it at people. Stuff like that, absolutely, because you would just be like, that's a magic wand of lightning bolt. <laughs> Sucks magic out of the air and shoots it at people. That's right. It doesn't have to be an artifact. It's just a magic wand. <laughs> uh, assuming time goes on, mages become more and more rare. Why would they become more and more rare? I feel like they become more and more common as magic is more commonplace as the years go on. Yeah, maybe they, they misunderstood the uh, origin. Uh, machines are very rare, rare commonplace mutations. Uh, Mike, uh, the question of mutations, 
Uh, I actually kind of like the idea of, like I said, if they use magic injected into people, and that's how some races come about. Like, oh, you want to be a fire genocide? They actually take fire magic and they shove it in you, and your body transforms. But sometimes it goes wrong. Yeah, yeah. Right? No, I'm game. For, I'm game for that. That kind of right? that like, kind of mutation. Like, oh, you're a human, and you want to be like more or less um, uh, a tiefling. Cool. We inject demon magic into you, and oh, we fucked up. You're a ton of rook. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, and and in this in this world that we've kind of laid out, sorcerers are a type of mutation in and of itself. Yep, in and of itself, exactly. Uh, just like Ezo in Mass Effect. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, make the company the players work for be called Dell Corp. That's that, that's that's funny. It's... Um. Uh, is there are, are there people like barbarians who are immune to magic or actively seek to destroy items or people that was crafted? Actually, I like the idea of barbarians who are uh, against who are against um, uh, machines. And actually, one of the nifty things I like the idea of is a group of barbarians that are against machines and don't even know magic exists yet. They're not even aware of it. Um, I just don't know if I want them to be like humans or a different race. I kind of like the idea of it being like lizard folk or something, you know. Mm-hmm. All right, Mike. We can keep going on and answering questions like this, but I don't know. How, how do you I feel? feel? Like, I feel like we've got a really cool uh, foundation for what we want to do with this world. I like it. I like where we're at. I think a big heavy factor for how much we have to put in, because I'm not just going to build just anything, because uh, we kind of talk about the things that we want. But if we were like, fuck it, let's just play in Iron Kingdoms. Well, a lot of the things that we, ju- we could discuss are just going to be handled by that, right? Yeah. Um, just the world itself. Like I don't need Iron Kingdom's r- world. Their planet. We'll have our own planet. Right. So, um, we'll just use their stats. Yeah. Um, I think the ne- if there's an, a next step for like another session, I think it's going to be like creating kingdoms and kings and like setting up some governments, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think once your dwarf forge is done being built. And you send me the basics, we can start coming up with Yeah, I'll just send you the map, for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, that was, uh, I think that's it then, huh? I think that pretty much covers what we wanted to to, uh, go over, the basics of building this world. Awesome, cool. So uh, next time, we'll have a lot more direction, uh, because by the time we do this stream next time, we'll have a a system have been picked out for it, and um, then we can start, like, really, we'll have the map built. Right. So we start really filling in the gaps and making things work out. Yeah. Um, the hole for the foundation is done and you're beginning to mix the cement. No, I think taking from somebody else's, we've plotted our land and now we're starting to uh, source which company we're going to rent the equipment from. There you go. <laughs> you know, I, I, who, who's going to lend us the backhoe the cheapest? Blades so. in the Dark next week? Uh, no, but I'll have the book and I'll be going through it at least, so. Yeah, what, what, when does Amazon say you'll get it in? It's delivered, so I, I should I should have it by tomorrow or the next day. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Nice. Cool. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you popped in just late, the VOD will be available right away, as always, for subs, and it'll be available in a few days on the YouTube channel. Um, next week is the week of the 3rd and 4th. So we'll be, yeah, next week is going to be, a, well, hopefully a normal week in some regard. The week after, I will not be here for Wednesday or Thursday. That'll be packed south uh, after that. So, um, We'll uh, just keep an eye on Twitter. We'll be, we'll be, even if I'm not here the week after that, Scott will be doing something on his channel or whatever. So don't worry about it. We'll have content for you. Uh, but we'll be back next Wednesday doing something or other. We'll, uh, we'll keep you informed on the Twitter. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you next time, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>